world's perspective during the eclipse, the Earth, instead of being completely dark, will have the sun's glow surrounding it. The sun's glow surrounding the Earth then transfers itself onto the lunar surface, giving it the red appearance. On average, a lunar eclipse occurs twice a year, but not all are total. Though we'll have three more lunar eclipses between now and September of 2015, an eclipse similar to the one tonight won't happen again until 2019, making this a very rare event. I'm Matt Sampson, The Weather Channel. And that's the news for Radio VR in Washington. I'm Kate Zickel. An alarming new study finds that people suffering from stress-related disorders react poorly to being trapped in underwater elevators. A tired 398-month-old throws a tantrum, and a little clay thing is purchased at an arts festival. And now an eerily perfect recap of this week's news. The Catholic Church reversed its long-held stance against gay marriage this week after meeting Connecticut couple Tony and Craig. The vacationing pair dazzled the Pope and assorted clergy with their witty conversation and true loving affection for each other, leading Vatican officials to conclude that love is love and it's silly to put restrictions on it in this day and age. The Chinese people announced that they would be willing to forgive most of the United States' $1.16 trillion debt if Americans agreed to dress up in costumes and perform silly dances for them. Chinese officials encouraged U.S. citizens to wear sequined vests and prance around while slapping their big fat American tummies, promising that the more humiliating the performance, the more debt will be erased. In sports, NASCAR fans are deeply puzzled by a mysterious black family seen attending multiple races. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you want here toll-free at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. We'll take your calls about anything at all. And the we tonight includes me, Ian. And it is I, Brian Tan, back again. And Mark. Brian Tan rejoining us uh, for another episode. We had him back on uh, late 2013. Yep. After, November, November 4th. Yep, actually. After, right after the, uh, the key invention, yep. uh, at which you were the final speaker and the video of your final speech is up on keenvention.info. Awesome. You were talking about your, for those listeners who weren't tuned in at that time, you were talking about your experience as a corrections officer and what led yep. you to leave and what led you there. And it was a great uh, speech that went on uh, longer than expected. Yeah, you were very an passionate. hour and a half, actually. <laughs> and that, that's the reason why we don't schedule anything after the, uh, <laughs> the ending speech of the day. So it was great. That's and that, that video is up in full. You can watch the full thing as well as everything else from Keenvention, every single panel, every speech. It's all there and it's all free at keenvention.info. Plus, you can learn about Keenvention 2014, which is coming yeah. up at the end of this year. So don't forget to uh, to check that out. Our toll-free number again tonight is 855-450-FREE. And you can Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. I don't think I mentioned this last night, uh, but I had intended to, and I told Barry that I would do so. Barry Cooper is still with us. Thank what? goodness. <laughs> Uh, okay, good. Ba Barry Cooper. Now, Brian Tan, uh, Baron, Barry Cooper is a former narcotics officer. Okay. Who a few years ago, it's several years ago now at this point, must have been like 05, 06, 07, somewhere in there, uh, he changed sides. All right. He came out uh, against the war on drugs after having been one of the top uh, most recognized narcotics officers in the state of Texas. Oh, so okay. This guy was on the inside and he was, you know, putting people in jail for. Drugs. Anything drug related, right? Yep. So he came out, uh, he created a DVD called Never Get Busted, where he kind of reveals some of the expertise that he had gained over the years being a narcotics officer. Right. And he went online and he started promoting that. He ended up getting on, you know, various different television shows. And so, like, you know, they'd put him up on CNN with some other talking head from the, the drug war side and he'd talk about ending the drug war. And he was a really great guy. Uh, apparently what happened recently on his Facebook page, the Never Get Busted Facebook page, somebody posted that Barry was checking into rehab and then a few days later posted that Barry had died of a drug overdose. Oh, boy. Here we go. <laughs> so, of course, I, you know, first thing I did was I emailed him and, you know, hey, you know, is this all, are you all right? Because I'd seen two things on Facebook. I'd seen that uh, people were saying he was still alive and then his Facebook page saying it's that he was dead. So went on to nevergetbusted.com and discovered that he was still, in point of fact, alive and that apparently what had happened was a former employee from five years 
previous, right, right, apparently still had access to the Never Get Busted Facebook page. He went in and just five decided years that's later, what he was going to do. Right. I mean, he waited. I mean, he Dude. definitely bided his time on this. He went in, swept out all the other admins from the page. Wow. And, uh, <laughs> and, and basically took over operation of the page and made it look like Barry was a drug addict and and then died as a result of a drug overdose. <laughs> Turns out Barry's alive and well. He's in Mexico uh, with his beautiful wife, Candy, and their kids, and uh, cool. they're doing fine. Well, that's good. So we're going to actually have Barry Cooper on the show this Saturday night. because It's been a while since we've actually had him on, mm-hmm. and uh, he's always doing something interesting. He's actually working on a, a third Never Get Busted DVD, and he's got other stuff in the, the works, which we'll talk about more at that time. But I did promise Barry that I would mention that. And so those of you who might have heard the rumors of uh, Barry's... He is still alive. And you know, you are not famous until you have a death hoax on the internet. <laughs> you are not. <laughs> okay. He's made it then, He's I guess, made it. He is point. now the man. <laughs> so stay tuned for that. That's coming up Saturday night. Uh, also on the way here this evening, the story about this guy, Kevin Edson, cave on. He calls himself Cave on. Now, were you aware of this guy, Brian Tan? Um, uh, I heard. I heard about it on um, W E E I the other day. I, all I do is listen to sports talk radio, and I heard them talking about it. And uh, apparently, he showed up. They, they were having a um, an event to commemorate, you know, the one year anniversary of the tragedy. And he showed. They're talking about the Boston Marathon yeah. on uh, on the fifteenth. Apparently, he showed up with a backpack, and we'll tell you more about that here in a moment. Uh, apparently it really upset a lot of people and he's now in, uh, he's been ordered to a psychiatric evaluation and we'll, we'll give you more details on that. I guess I was just curious as to you, if you'd heard of him prior to this incident. Um, no, not uh, prior to this. No, I hadn't really heard anything from him, but some of the things that I did hear about him are very interesting. He is not very well received in his family. He really isn't. We can get uh, into that here in a little bit. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREEZE. Plus, coming up, Mark, you've got some pretty big news. I think we're going to start things out here th- oh, with this shortly. Is awesome. About, uh, awesome in a horrifying way, yeah, it about is. assassinations. Uh, the federal government apparently has made some sort of ruling about them being able to kill Americans. And we'll find out more about that. But Joe's on the line in Kentucky first. Joe, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Brian, and Mark. Joe. Hey, how you guys doing? Hey, right. what's, what's hey on your Joe, mind, how are you? Well, I was in a car accident Monday. Yikes, sorry to hear oh, that. Man. I was a, I was a passenger, and we were going down uh, uh, downtown Louisville, and uh, a car came out of the lane, forced us into the park, parked cars on the side of the road. I'm a little slow. I'm still a little punch drunk. I took a lick on the head. Yikes. Uh, but uh, uh, they pinned the cab. We hit a cab, and the cabbie happened to be out of his cab at the time, and it pinned him between his his cab and the vehicle in front of him. And, you know, I I was pastoring the vehicle, and I went with my boss and the driver of the vehicle that I was in. We've already been to see an attorney. <laughs> my question to you guys is... <clears throat> The mental, the mental anguish aspect of it, from seeing this man crushed and 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 you know writhing and excruciating pain in the blood. Is there a monetary value to that? Just to clarify, so let me make sure I understood your situation. What you're saying is you were driving down the road, somebody forced your car over, you that car, the car you were in, uh, hit. This taxi cab and the man who was driving the taxi was somehow caught in between and got crushed. Is, did I understand you correctly? Yeah. No. So your question is, in the settlement or whatever it is that comes out What's of the monetary that you could get, whoever this person is, it would presumably be against the person who allegedly forced you over into this accident. You're saying, Correct. would you be able to get some sort of anguish? Uh, reward for or award for what you went through. Well, well, I mean, you know, I would, when I when I go to sleep, this this is what I've seen. I have now for three days. You know, is it, do you think there's a, a a monetary value to that for the? I mean, you know. Sleep. Anything I say would be total speculation. Absolutely. I don't know well, if either of these other two gentlemen in the uh, the studio know. You know, I'm not. I'm this. not talking about uh, from a legal standpoint. I have no idea. The legal system's full of liars, mm-hmm. as they call them down in Kentucky. And um, <laughs> the but 
what I would say is is that if uh, if your head's damaged in the accident, they should have to pay to uh, for your damaged head. And if your mind is damaged in the accident, then they should have to pay for your damaged mind. Um, and, um, oh, and we lost him. Nope, no. we lost him. Um, so absolutely, I, I would say that that if if something happened, that from a moral standpoint, yeah, you you know, there's no nothing mm-hmm. wrong. From a legal standpoint, though, ask an attorney. I absolutely, would, uh, you want you definitely want to get something from the attorney. Make sure and you know. Insurance companies, too, but you got to be careful going that route sometimes because insurance companies, they're all about protecting their own investments, so you want to be careful of that way, too. But most definitely, I would say consult a... um Consult, you know, get get some legal counsel, see what the There's options are. Certainly going to be an attorney out there who's going to be interested in a case like that. Absolutely. It sounds, it sounds to me like something it wouldn't be hard to find somebody who'd yeah. be willing to pick that up. And they yeah. would know the answer yeah. to that question. So you can join us here on the phones at 855-450-FREE. So, Mark, the federal government has made some sort of determination about assassination campaigns and the justification for them. Is that right? Yep. Uh, this is from sfgate.com. A Bay Area federal judge says the Obama administration can keep secret a memo spelling out the legal rationale for a 2011 drone attack in Yemen that killed a U.S. citizen and alleged terrorist mastermind. Oh, wow. So the Justice Department was entitled to withhold the memo on the grounds of national security and lawyer-client confidentiality, said this uh, U.S. District Chief Judge Claudia Wilkin of Oakland. We'll Friday. come back with more. So there's a memo that explains the reasons why they killed this American person in another country, but they don't have to reveal the memo. Is that right? Right. All right, more coming up. You can share your thoughts at 855-450-FREE and bring up whatever's on your mind here on Free Talk Live. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I am is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. My name is Angel Rach. I'm a mother of two teenage children, and I fought all the way to the Supreme Court for the right to use the medicine that saved my life. I've been permanently disabled for 10 years with an inoperable brain tumor, wasting syndrome, and several other serious conditions. For four years, I was in a wheelchair in so much pain, I couldn't even hug my kids. The hardest part was looking in their eyes and seeing how much they were suffering because of my medical condition. The medicine that gave me my life back and gave my kids their mom back was cannabis, also known as medical marijuana. With medical marijuana, I can walk, maintain my weight, and I can be a mom. Without it, my doctors believe that I would die. To learn more about medical marijuana, contact Marijuana Policy Project at 1-877-JOIN-MPP or on the web at mpp.org. 
If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Bring up what you want. Here toll free at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. You can Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. Feel free to connect with us in the way that works best for you. And, of course, you can join us online over at freetalklive.com. There's a Bitcoin theorem proving treasure hunt at mathgate.info. Now, you can go over there and find Bitcoins by proving theorems. A theorem is kind of like a Sudoku puzzle, I guess. I mean, might be a way to describe it. So you can learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so connect to, to mathgate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, and find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go now to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt it's mathgate.info all right we're going to continue here mark you've got the story about the federal government making a decision on uh the, now who did they murder they uh, they assassinated well, somebody well uh, murder and assassination are two different things what, um really? so what's hmm. the difference murder is illegal um oh <laughs> Well, I, I said, would think assassinating somebody is illegal, too, but well, not, if not you, when you're the government, huh? Well, not if you're the largest, uh, most powerful government on earth. You can uh, write a legal paper that says that it's legal, lock that legal paper away so nobody can see it, and then it's it's legal. I'm allowed to kill people because I said so. It's a Pretty lot much. like that. That's about the summary here, but now it's now they're legally saying that, right? That's what the old <laughs> excuse was, and now they've got a court order saying the same thing? That's correct. So, must be nice to have friends in places. It really must. So tell me more, Mark, about this story. So although the U.S. Attorney uh, General Eric Holder and other Obama administration officials have made public statements justifying drone strikes, Wilkins said none of them was specific enough for her to rule against the government's claim of secrecy and require officials to disclose the legal rationale for the Yemen attack. The ruling dismissed a suit the, uh, by the First Amendment Coalition, an open government advocacy group in San Rafael. The organization sued after a September 2011 drone strike in Yemen that killed Anwar al-Awaki, a U.S.-born Muslim cleric whom authorities suspected of organizing an attempt to blow up a Detroit-bound airliner in 2009. Another U.S. citizen also killed in the drone attack, and uh, Al Walkie's. Now, mind you, they suspected him of doing that. He had never been proven. Yeah, they didn't in any... know he actually did it. Right, right. they had never been proven uh, in, in any sort of court of law no. that he actually did anything like that. And now it can't be because they murdered. Uh, oh, excuse me, assassinated. Assassinated. Him. assassinated him. Make sure you get the verbiage right. right. Come and, on, and, man. And the thing about his 16-year-old <laughs> son, who was killed um, in the same strike. Well, no, not in the same strike, okay. but by a drone in Yemen the following month. Uh, but he, there was also a U.S. citizen killed by the same drone strike. Strike as Elwaki. Um, yes, um, so there were three U.S. citizens killed by drone strikes in the course of about a month in Yemen. Um, and at this point, we have sort of no legal explanation as to why it's okay to assassinate American citizens. Frankly, I don't think that you know the legal designation known as American citizen really should make a difference in this. Uh, you know, assassinations Agreed. are human life is human life. It doesn't matter where you're born. 
Well, so, plus you can also make the argument there's no such thing as a citizen because the government has no obligation to protect you. In this case, they don't even have an obligation to explain why they haven't protected you well, to the, death. Well, the definition of citizen has been changed, uh, at least le in the legal uh, dictionaries. Uh, the Black's Law Dictionary used to have your definition, Ian, but it's changed to a different one. Has so, it? Yeah. It's a really? different definition now. Um, and the definition, With which edition of Black's Law did it change? I don't know which, which edition, but I have seen a newer edition of Black's hmm. Law, and it said, you know, just something entirely different. Interesting. <laughs> Basically, you that. know, it's, it's, almost like, it's almost like the government's turned into a rowdy, rowdy piper. As soon as you think you have all the answers, change the questions the have been changed. <laughs> <laughs> so oh uh, going on here. Um, a federal judge in New York dismissed a similar disclosure suit in January 2013 filed by the New York Times and the American Civil Liberties Union. The plaintiffs have appealed the dismissal. In a On April 4th, a judge in Washington, D.C. dismissed a damage suit against U.S. officials by parents of those killed in the drone strike, saying officials who order such attacks must be trusted to act legally and are not subject to judicial oversight. I don't trust them. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> you just got to. They wrote a piece of oh, paper okay. and kept that piece of paper secret. It could say anything on it, but we've got to trust them that it says something convincing from a legal standpoint. Legal mm -hmm. pad or napkin? <laughs> well, we have no idea. Oh, right, no because we it. just have to trust that they did it, and everything is A-OK. -okay. Thanks, could, Barry, Alabama. It could, could be encrypted in a vault someplace. We just don't know. Oh. So the, um, the rationale is reportedly described on a 16-page Defense Department white paper that was leaked to the news media last year after being circulated to members of Congress among the conclusions that the U.S. can launch a drone attack when it suspects the target is planning violence and does not have to wait until the evidence of an immediate assault. So if you're planning violence... As far as the government is concerned, they can kill you off, and they don't need. It doesn't need to be immediate. Hmm. Let's go to the phones. We've got Wit on the line in Paradise. You're on Free Talk Live. Wit. Wit. Assalamualaikum, like my brother. Hello, Peace Wit. be upon you, my brother. What's on your mind tonight? Well, I support the war on terrorists, and I was just thinking about how I don't believe Barack Obama's ordering the summary execution of terrorists because he suspects they are terrorists. I believe he's the upon him, Barack Obama, who in Ian's world must be an anti-Muslim because he's anti-Islamist like me. These men that he's ordering the summary execution of people do for a misspent life, spend their waking days trying to figure out how they can blow up innocent people. So just to clarify, Whit, what America you're saying is important. you're saying that you believe that when the government claims somebody's done something bad, that they should just be able to take that person out, just, just destroy their life. No, I didn't say that. You said that. But if you want me to clarify my beliefs, I believe Barack Hussein Obama is ordering the summary execution by drone wars of people like Alawaki who, if you know what he did for a misspent life and you've listened to his, his preachings in his mosques, and you know the people that he hung out with, who also hung out with Osama bin Laden and the like, uh, these are not people that care anything about you. What so about his 16-year-old son? Association. They want you dead. What about his 16-year-old son? His 16-year-old son, by the way, I like how in other conversations they're just a kid, like, you know, the bone and thing in the shower. But that 16-year-old son, fully, you know, as God is my witness, and I can say this, I know, he knew what his dad did for a misspent life. And if my dad were plotting to murder innocent people, well, I'd go borrow one of his uh, guns and deposit a full metal jacket in my, well, but my dad wasn't. A murderer, but he Aren't was you killer. jumping to a conclusion? Right. What if he was, he was going there to convince some otherwise? You don't tell me. You don't jumping to conclusions. Yeah, jumping. Yeah, to you're jumping to the conclusion that this uh, this man Obama. was pl uh, plotting to commit murder. You're taking the word of the federal uh, government. I'm taking the word of even a person that I don't even have any much respect for as a human being. That being our president. So you support uh, the bombings of those that, those two individuals. I know three, that, three. You support I know those that bombings. He's with, excuse me. You support those bombings, right? I support the drone wars that we're using to eliminate. I'm not using any drones want... at all. If you want to support okay. violence, okay, it's your business. I hold over, and by it's the way, sick. No, nope, definitely not. 855 450 free is the toll free number. That's 855 450 
three seven three three. I've about had my fill of uh, violent advocates, people making excuse for the taking of life. In this case, with no due process whatsoever. The process was press the button, drop the bomb. Press Free it, talk do it. Live. My name is Jessica Armand. I'm an activist, a GCN listener, and mother of three. Our drinking water and food are filled with fluoride and other contaminants that harm our teeth and gums. To protect my family, I created My Magic Mud, an all-natural teeth whitening and strengthening remedy. My Magic Mud is a soft powder that polishes your teeth, reduces sensitivity, and removes harmful toxins from deep inside your mouth. You deserve a bright, healthy smile. Visit MyMagicMud.com and get yours today. That's MyMagicMud.com. Hi, this is Larry Smith. Sometimes bad things happen to good people. When the cleaners ruined some special clothing, all they could do was show us a sign that said they weren't responsible. But when they got the letter from one of our Legal Shield attorneys, he promptly gave us a check for $1,152. Worry less and live more with lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. That's 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Toll House Refrigerated Cookie Dough. Who would you bake some love for? Find fun and easy baking ideas at TollHouse.com. Kids love doing arts and crafts projects, especially when you join in. Try channeling all that artistic energy into the kitchen and bake up some creative treats together. Think of your art supplies as the frosting, sprinkles, and decorating gels, and use cookies or cupcakes as your canvas. For more tips like these, visit us at Parenthood.com slash Your Family Today. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. Immigrating to the Shire was easy. I was instantly plugged into a community of individuals who also care about peace, liberty, and justice and are willing to do something about it. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever you want toll free at 855-453-free. The strange guy who was at the Boston Marathon this year will tell you what he was up to. 
here in a little bit. Your uh, call certainly welcome. You can join us on Skype as well. Skype username is lrn.fm. The Free State Project is your best chance at achieving liberty in your lifetime. You, if you love freedom, really need to get together with other people that think like you do. We've given you examples previously on these airwaves of some of the amazing success stories that Free State Project participants have uh, have had here, not just in the kind of the realm of civil disobedience, which obviously is kind of very sexy. It's got a lot of sizzle for news, but yeah. also in the world of politics, which usually isn't very exciting or interesting at all. But every now and then, uh, something actually makes it through this arduous, painful, frustrating, slow political process. And some good things finally end up happening. Yeah, every now and then something will actually happen that's worth you know mentioning. It happens here in New Hampshire because we have what's called the uh, the citizen legislature, where you make a hundred bucks a year to go in and do this job of legislator. In most states, you make you know twenty five, fifty, seventy thousand dollars a year. It's, so it's more in other states something that attracts professional politicians, right. lots of attorneys, for instance. Which it's not. It's not even supposed to be. It's supposed to be the duty. It originally became as the duty of the American citizen to leave the farms, serve their country in that regard, and then when it was time, when you were done, go back home, do your thing, and leave it for someone else. And it's, it's still that way here in, in New Hampshire in a lot Absolutely. of ways. There are some state reps who've been there for many, many years, but mm-hmm. a lot of them, there's a lot of turnover because of the what you're saying there. Right. These people don't, you know, you make a hundred bucks a year, you don't really want to stay <laughs> yeah, you don't for wanna, very long. This is going to put food on my table. I mean, they'll, they will give you a gas stipend, but that's other, besides the hundred bucks, that's all you get is, right. you know, a, a piddly amount of money and that's to the way it should, And that's the way it should be. So uh, this guy who put in this bill that I'm going to tell you about here that has now passed the state house passed overwhelmingly by the way 268 to 29 it now has passed the senate this bill repeals the uh, statutes that make adultery a crime they've been on the books for hundreds of years nice. here in new hampshire um, but right now it is still a misdemeanor it's it's a misdemeanor that can be uh, punished by you know like $1200 fine uh, if you get caught and they prosecute you Hear for that adultery swingers? You better be careful. Well, that's just it. It hasn't actually been per- prosecuted in right. about a decade. But even that is a shock to me that yeah. even within the last decade, you know, it's 10 still, years ago, that was says, only t- 20, 2004. He since cheated on me. Arrest him. Yeah, <laughs> since the year 2000, happened. somebody right. has been <laughs> somebody, charged with adultery. I would love to meet that guy that got, or female that got <laughs> got a misdemeanor for cheating on their it's spouse. Crazy. That's awesome. Now, in some states, apparently there's at least one state where it's a felony still to, uh, to cheat wow. on somebody. But uh, a state representative from Manchester, Tim O'Flaherty, has put forth a bill that repeals adultery as a crime in New Hampshire. It passed overwhelmingly in the House about a week or so ago. Ahead, Tim. And now it uh, passed a, what's called a voice vote in the Senate. So there wasn't actually like a um, a person-by-person person vote. That, so we don't know exactly who voted yes and who voted no. Right. Uh, but it did pass by the voice vote. So well, that's good. The governor has, uh, Governor Maggie Hassan here in New mm. Hampshire, you know, I certainly have my issues with Maggie Hassan. Yep, same here. But she's doing the right thing on this one. She is going to sign this piece of legislation. She's yeah. pledged to do that. So this is a pretty much a done deal. Baby this, steps, baby steps. Right, unless she backs out at the last minute for some <laughs> reason, which seems unlikely, she's going to sign this. And clearly she should sign this because, you know, you look at the vote and 268 to 29, that's a huge vote. Give it, I mean, it give it, give it. Quit playing games ten, and give it. Ten times as many people voted for this as voted against, against it. it. So right. it would be a really stupid move politically for Maggie Hassan to veto this or for the or for the Senate to vote against it. So they did vote for this. And that's yet another uh, feather in our cap here. Tim O'Flaherty is a Free State Project participant. He moved here from I don't know where, but he was not originally from here. Uh, he moved here as part of the Free State Project. He was elected, by the way, as I reported over at freekeen.com. And if you go to freekeen.com right now, you'll see it's uh, the top story or close to the top of the page. Uh, NH to repeal adultery as a crime is the, the headline. But if you click his name in that story, I link back to the story from 2012 where I reported on his uh, his being ele- him being elected. Mm-hmm. And he was elected by one vote. Wow. So a lot of people will will say things like, oh, your vote doesn't matter. Mm. And in a lot of cases, that's absolutely true. You but know. sometimes, sometimes it does work out that way. I mean, by one vote, you want to talk about by the skin of your teeth. 
And the interesting thing was he was up against another Free State Project participant. So oh, wow. <laughs> it was actually, he was the Democrat in the race, and then there was a Republican in the race who was also, I think, a, mo- a mover for the Free State Project. And they both knew each other. So they right. were running against That's one awesome. another. In fact, at one point they were roommates, which makes it even more unusual. Awkward. But, uh, but yeah, one vote. And I thought that was really interesting because there's been a situation in Markstown where he lives where a fire truck, uh, it was they a, passed that by one the, vote. what they call a town truck. Yeah, so it w- they were voting like two hundred thousand dollars or something like that. One hundred fifty, yeah. To uh, to buy this fire truck, and you missed the meeting, Mark. Unfortunately, but had you been there, you would have been able to stop that vote from from happening. But with your one vote, um, yeah, it right? wasn't a fire truck; it was a town truck. This is I'm like sorry. a um, okay. this is like a, a, a dump An truck, expensive basically. truck. Yeah, yeah. A very one hundred and fifty thousand. That's a lot. Truck. That's that's more than what most people have for a house. I mean, right. Wow. And this is not a big town. I don't imagine the town budget is very, very large. Yeah, what do you need $150,000 for a truck for? Because the one before it was caught fire and burned up. Okay, but why? <laughs> Whose fault is that? So, Apparently oh, well, they didn't our, our, have an insurance policy? Yeah, really. Oh, so our truck caught on. So does that mean that if my yard catches on fire, then I should be able to get $150,000 for a brand new car. I don't think that's going to fly with the Keene City Council. Probably not. So uh, so oh, one well. vote made a difference there. One vote made a difference with uh, Tim O'Flaherty's campaign. And so, yeah, you're right. A vote doesn't make a difference in the presidential election. Absolutely and it not. it never will. Absolutely and it will not. never make a difference in you know any sort of federal level elections. But here in New Hampshire, it's not uncommon for things to come down to one, one vote. person, and that could be you. And, and again, this guy is a Free State Project participant, so yet another uh, feather in the cap. We've got the mm. jury nullification law that makes it so that you can actually bring up jury nullification in the courtrooms. We've got the knife ban that was repealed years ago. This is a new one. This is repealing the uh, the adultery law. So there's uh, going to be other things that are thrown out there. And by the Slowly way, but surely. Tim O'Flaherty, uh, you know, he's a new legislator. He is. He was elected in 2012. It's a two-year term, so he's up this year. Right. But he's gotten this done. And a lot of people will say that, well, if you get elected to a legislature somewhere, you can't rock the boat. You can't shake. You know, well, you can't shake things up. You got to just, you know, kind of learn the ropes and start making alliances, and then maybe in your next term you can get something done. And <laughs> he got it done. He in got his it done first right term. away. Yeah. Why so, not rock the boat? Sometimes you need to rock the boat to really get things going. I mean, hey, if you want to go swimming, you need to rock the boat to get in the water. So, true. Or Some you can just jump. is involved. I mean, mm-hmm. and so I think it's just a success story all around. Now, yeah, there are some things he submitted that I thought were good bills that, you know, didn't get passed this year. But that's Well, that's the kind of the, the thing with the New Hampshire legislature, though. I mean, it is – of all – it's the largest lawmaking body, um, English-speaking lawmaking body, besides the U.S. Congress and the House of Commons. So it is the largest of state lawmaking bodies. It is intended to be difficult to get laws through, and that includes laws that undo laws. So, uh, you know, the fact that anything goes through is always, you know, it's always amazing if it undoes yeah, an big, old law. It's a real big deal. If you got to go through a lot of people. To get something done, it's a huge deal when it finally happens. That's right. a feather in this guy's cap, for real. Way to go, Tim. Now, I hope he's going to run again for uh, state rep this year. I'll because, vote for him. You know, we don't want to have it. Fortunately, he's living in Manchester, but so yeah. he won't be able to. Uh, but what we do need to see happen Dang. here in New Hampshire is more people to move here as part of the Free State Project. Remember, the Free State Project is the idea of getting 20,000 people to move to the same place. We've only got 1,500 so far, so we've still got a lot more to go. We've got over 15,500 who have pledged to move. But we still need to get to that 20,000 number. Once 20,000 is reached, Free Talk Live, uh, or not Free Talk Live, the Free State Project move will officially begin. So people like Mark and myself, we're here as early movers. In right. fact, Mark, you've got something that's pretty exciting about helping uh, cancer kids from St. Jude with match. Like, we're, we're going to be giving like 30 bucks. You, me, another gentleman are all teaming up. 30 bucks per Free State Project signer between now and the end of the month. That's right. So get your family awesome. and friends to sign up because, uh, you know, we're, it, it'll it'll help kids with cancer and give them liberty in their lifetime. Right. So every yeah. sign up for the Free State Project between now and the end of the month, we're going to give uh, a total between Mark, myself, and another gentleman, 30 bucks per signer to St. Jude. We'll come awesome. back with more here on Free Talk Live. 
I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact and helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms. Join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com. Hey everyone, have you heard about the No No Hair Removal Device that's sweeping the globe? If you want to go weeks without shaving and get smooth, professional quality results, here's our favorite host, Cheryl, for No No Hair Removal. Thanks. Hey gals, I love talking about my No No. It's this cute little hair removal system that you can take with you and use almost anywhere. Anywhere at home or on the road. No more expensive in office treatments, painful waxing, and no more wasting your valuable time. Got unwanted facial hair? No No has patented Thermacon technology that works on all hair and skin colors. So it's perfect for using on all body parts. And now you can take advantage of this incredible risk free trial. Get the No No, the facial kit, a travel case, and a $100 discount shopping card. And you don't risk a penny to try it. Try the incredible No No hair completely risk-free. Call 1-800-953-6062. That's 800-953-6062. 800-953-6062. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Which order you can go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring time into the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey, hey. 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 Excuse me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. Now, I have work today. This is you ain't gonna make. Wait, no. Now, wait a minute. Holy crap. Whoa. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from me? Because you're scared me. What am I being detained for? You'll be in terms. What is this? You'll be in terms. What is this? Democrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the Internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com you're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Bring up whatever you want here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. As we learned earlier, Mark's story that he brought in, Explains that in the Anwar al Alwiki, how do you pronounce it? I'm not even going to try. Al Awaki. Al Awaki and his 16 year old son and the other gentleman who was bombed to death by the United States. I got no idea if if it's a gentleman or not. Some person. Maybe a lady. uh, (laughs) Well, I just mean, I don't know. Gentleman means that they're, you know, a good person. I don't know if that's the case. Uh, They didn't get they didn't get trials. I'm going to presume they're a good person until proven otherwise. 
Hey, uh, innocent until proven guilty, good until proven to be a butthead. There you go. So, uh, so you know, what we found out was that you – not only do you not have – does the government not have any obligation to protect you, as we've seen from court case after court case at the Supreme Court. They've ruled this over and over again. But when they actually bomb you to death, they don't have any obligation to even explain themselves. Now, there is an explanation, apparently. There's some sort of 16-page memo. But you don't get to find out about it because you are not in the cool kids club. That's right. You're not in the gang, so you don't get to read the memo. This memo has been blocked. The federal judge has ruled that um, there's no obligation to provide this yeah, information. It was actually leaked at one point. Oh, really? um, so they, they, they have it, but... Um, they yeah. blamed Snowden for that, too. Um, but the, inter, the interwebs has okay. it, as I understand it. Um, and the only thing I got from the memo the first time when it was leaked was the kind of interesting thing that if the government believes that you may in the future do something bad, and it doesn't have to be imminent that you're going to do it. You don't have to be on your way to do something bad. Yeah, they can just assassinate you. So, so if they decide, oh, well, we think that Brian Tan might decide to go and punch someone in the face. Let's blow up where he lives. And that's, we don't have to explain to his mom. It hasn't gotten that extreme yet, but that's essentially That's where it's going to end up going. That's and gonna there's be- no reason why it couldn't go to that point. I mean, somebody might listen to you say that and say, oh, yeah, right, Brian, sure. That's sure the police, lo- local cops are going to do that. Keen police is going to do that. Maybe not right now, no, but... but- Hey. Look at what they're doing with the police departments around. I mean, you used to be a corrections officer. I'm yeah. sure you're not unaware of the Bearcat, kind of this trend towards uh, militarizing the police, giving them more machine guns, more armored vehicles, taking the. Uh, it's scary. Giving it's them, scary. you know, making sure they wear uh, sunglasses to obstruct their, you know, you can't see their eyes anymore. Mm-hmm. I mean, just to, just kind of disconnecting from their humanity yeah, as huge much human as possible. Disc- yeah, there's a huge, almost like a push, almost like they want you to be disconnected. And that was one of the things that I couldn't I couldn't handle anymore. Well, isn't that, isn't it seen. also culture as well, like within the kind of the inside of the law enforcement community? Yeah, is kind it's of. us versus them. To yeah, in a lot of ways. I mean, even still, there there was a brief period of time that when I was a CEO that I, it was an us versus them mentality until, you know, I started talking to you and just really just opening myself up to other people. You know, I really what really changed my mind with certain things is talking to an inmate who was said to have been one of the most just difficult inmates to deal with. I had um, called them all out of their cells when we first moved to the, to the new spiritual retreat. Mm -hmm. And I had said, you know, there were people screaming rat at one particular guy. And I said, look, the next person that does it is gone. And I was like heated about it. Well, someone did it. I had them yanked out. And then one of the guys said, Hey, can we talk? Can I talk to you for a second? I said, yeah, sure. Went and talked to him and said, you know what? I'm not saying that you were wrong, but I think you could have addressed us differently. You're addressing us like it's you versus us, and mm-hmm. it doesn't have to be like that. And that really shook me. You know, I really went, I drove home that night really thinking about that. You know, it, it doesn't have to, but there is a lot of ways in us versus them mentality, even though they say, well, we don't want that. We don't encourage that. No, it is there. It is. They don't discourage it in no, a lot they of ways. Don't. I mean, no, there was don't. a story years ago, and I don't know, not that many years ago, but I think it was during the 08 I, either the Republican or Democrat National Convention, it doesn't matter which one it was because the cops behaved the same way at right. both. They're all the but same. Anyway. There was one of them where the police actually had a police union made T-shirt that had kind of this glowering picture, salivating cop with a, a billy club kind of in you know one hand and he's kind of slapping it in his hand. Yeah, the, and it yeah, said yeah. like the, the wording said something like, I get up early to beat the crowds. Democratic mm. National Convention 2008 or something wow. like that. And it's just you know, right out there on Front Street that they just – that's how they think about you, they, that you're just somebody to be beating, uh, beating on. Well, well there's, a, there's a um another correctional facility. I don't know. I mean, you know what? Screw it. I'll say it. In uh, Merrimack County, in their training room, they've got a, do- a big old bulldog in a CO's uniform growling and snarling. Mm-hmm. I remember seeing that when I went there to train. It's like, no – when I see a dog growling and snarling, to me, that thinks straight out aggression. Sure sounds that way. Yeah, I'm not I'm not down with that. No. And, you know, I've told a lot of people, you know, you go in trying to be the one tough guy, eventually them 60 cats are going to get sick of you. Well, and, and I also don't want to make it sound like I'm indicting all police like no, this. Obviously, absolutely not. All not. police would wear a I get up early to beat the crowds right. uh, shirt. But a lot of people have the mentality. But, but there's a, this was by the police union, and it shows a culture. Yes. Uh, yeah, and, it does. Yeah. And, it, and it definitely shows another thing, too, is that it only takes one bad apple or a couple bad apples to mess it up for everybody. Because there's a lot of people that will say, 
I've never met a good cop. I've never met a good insert here. And then when they meet someone who is, they're like blown away because it's like, well, why can't everyone be like you? And it's like, well, because you get your couple of people that are not the norm. They're the exception. But those are also the people that don't end up sticking around long because they can't handle it. They can't handle they can't handle the BS and then they can't get to a point to change the culture because they're the minority. Well, yeah, especially if the corruption rises through the ranks as Absolutely. many who have, you know, we've over the years, we've been doing this show for more than a decade and we've had our share of people call in saying they were, you, you know, they used to be a police officer. I knew a guy uh, who claimed he was a, a police detective in New York City. This was just a personal guy that I knew in the past. Right. And he told me, you know, I said, he told me every single officer was corrupt in some sort of way that, you know, on his squad or his department or whatever, and that the corruption rises through the ranks. We've heard right. this year after year. And so what you, what you end up with the situation is where you've got, if there is that sort of proverbial good cop in a uh, system where being this bulldog is kind of what's called for and what's encouraged – and worse than that, you know, you've got uh, police beatings and things like that where you'll have the department backing up their guys and acting like everything was by the book when right. clearly it was what they've done something wrong. A good cop in a lot of cases is afraid to, to say come anything. Out against yeah, these guys. because because then what it ends up being is that they try to do the right thing. Now their life is in danger. They need yes. the crooked cats to back them up and oh yeah, we just we couldn't make it. Sorry. Mm. You know, and it's and what's really crazy and I got to go nerdy for a second, but you look at look at the police culture in like Batman. You got Commissioner Gordon, the one clean cut guy. He's got to watch his back around his own men a lot of the time because there's the corruption. He came in when there was a really corrupt guy. He took over, but that corruption is still there. And once corruption get in, it's like a weed. It mm-hmm. doesn't go away. You know, unless like well, then, what are you gonna do? Just fire everyone that's corrupt and just bring in all new people? Well, You'll great. Just have new corrupt people. Yeah. Now you got new corrupt people, or you get young guys that come in and they they get their their short and curlies get massive because now I've got power. So now you it's got true. and you know and I've seen it tons of times as a CEO. I've seen it. You know, new kids come in, fresh face, right out of you know recently hired. Soon as they get off and they're able to on their own. Yeah, I'm a tough guy because I've got a badge. Uh, Finally get to tell people what to do. Yeah. It's like, you know what? It's exciting for somebody (laughs) seeking power over others, even if all they are is a corrections officer. To Mm -hmm. some some extent, I I think this is a a system for protecting oneself. When I went to prison, um, you know, you were told on your, you know, first thing, you know, you got to do this and this. You act tough. Um, You know, if somebody tries you really hard, you just haul off and punch him in the face. You'll go to the, you'll go to confinement for a little while, but it'll be okay. Yeah, when you get out, your life will be better. A lot right. better now. Yeah, things will be better. And they tell you things like this. And I don't think it's any different. You mean the inmates tell you that? Other inmates in different places yeah. as, as you're getting assigned to your final. I've, I've, uh, even, I've even told some inmates that came in. I was like, look, don't come in being weepy. Mm-hmm. Because, like, look, I, can, I, I had to tell a guy before, I can only keep my eye on you, but so much. Mm-hmm. Sure. If, you, if you come in being weepy and wimpy, you're gonna get pushed around. You're gonna get pushed around. You're, there, there was a one guy who came in and he had sex offender charges on him, but people were giving like just really giving him a hard time, and he would try to leave everyone alone. Finally, one day he snaps and just goes after one guy who was just clearly bigger than him. It's like there is no way that in a in an upfront fight he was gonna beat this guy in a fight, but he just snapped and went after him because he was trying to build the. And he even told me he was trying to build the reputation. Here, so it would follow him up to Concord. And mm. it's like, well, please don't. I told him, I said, please don't try to bring that to Concord with you because I don't want to see your name in the paper that you got killed because that's all that's going to happen. You know, it's, well, like but, you're gonna, if you're talking about prison, those guys have a different set of motivations, different there, set right? of rules, different set of motivations. A lot of those guys are in there for life, whereas in a jail, those guys are there for the maximum of a year. Typically. Exactly. So they're or, get or for as long as it takes for them to go to prison. That's but, true. It's like the, it's it's a it's a no win situation no matter what so, and and it's like as a CEO sometimes you have to do the same thing. I notice like you can't go in weepy meek and mild. Yeah, either. for sure. We'll come back uh, with more here. In fact, since we're on the topic of bad cops, from the Chicago Tribune. Oh, here's five, a shock. Five cops caught in lies on the witness stand. Shocking. We'll come back with they would never do that. This is clearly a few bad apples. 855-453-CHOPS-LYING-IN-COURT. <laughs> cops lying in court. Never. 855-450-3733. We'll come back with more. Your thoughts are welcome. You can also join us on Skype. Username there, lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Hour 2 is next. Yeah. Breathe it in, kid. 
clean, fresh air thanks to these new air handler filters. They're more energy efficient, hold more dust, and are stronger than ever. And Granger's got over 3,000 different styles and sizes to choose from. Just ordered a new batch from Granger.com today. I love oxygen, kid. And this facility's got some great AO2. I'm breathing easier just thinking about these air handler filters. Get some today. Get it? Got it? Good. Call, click Granger.com slash air handler or stop by. Granger. For the ones who get it done. There's a treasure hunt going on at mathgate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to mathgate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking at mathgate.info. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done. Get a great deal. And a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire to Liberty Media, capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Thursday, April 17th, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.67 per ounce. Gold is worth $1,302 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $496. Antiwar.com reports, White House officials confirm that they have finished preparations to impose yet more sanctions on Russia, though they declined to provide any indication what form that would take. Press Secretary Jay Carney insisted that the U.S. would continue active preparation of more and more sanctions against Russia and that they were consequences for Russia's violation of Ukrainian sovereignty. The State Department concurred on the sanctions, but said they would not be imposed until after the Geneva talks with Russia, Ukraine, and the European Union. State Department spokeswoman Marie Harf insisted that Russia had to de-escalate the situation in eastern Ukraine if it wanted to be spared the new sanctions, though, ironically, the White House has endorsed the military escalation in the region as necessary for law and order in Ukraine and has not publicly counseled any caution in Ukraine's invasion of protest-held cities. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760. Reuters reports two incompatible ballot measures on background checks for gun buyers in Washington state enjoy majority support in a poll released on Tuesday, but the one advancing stricter gun control measures is more popular. The competing measures, both slated to be on the ballot in November in Washington, are the only firearm background check initiatives up for vote this year in the United States. They are the latest touchstones in a long-standing fight over background checks on gun buyers. The debate hinges on whether their expansion constitutes a common-sense approach to keeping guns away from criminals and the mentally unstable, or a first step to broader restrictions on gun ownership. Initiative 594 would require all firearm sales, including person-to-person -person sales at gun shows and those initiated online, to be predicated on a background check of the buyer. Initiative 591, however, would disallow background checks for gun purchases unless explicitly required by the federal government. 
Federal law exempts some gun sales from background checks, allowing for what opponents have dubbed the gun show loophole because some sales in that setting are exempt. The results on the Washington state gun measures from the Elway poll, which is independent of the two campaigns, shows Initiative 594 enjoying 72% support, while the other measure has 55% in favor. You can support FPP Radio by joining the FANS program. FANS are friends, allies, and numeri supporters. FANS help FPP afford to produce more original content. To learn more or to join the FANS program, visit fans.fppradio.com. That's F-A-N-S dot fppradio.com. CNET reports the Heartbleed bug has caused widespread anxiety, sent engineers scrambling into patch mode, and likely prompted millions of users to reinvent their passwords. But so far, there have been no accounts of attacks leveraging the bug until now. In the first known report of an attack using the security flaw, Canadian police have arrested a man who allegedly used Heartbleed to steal user data from the government's tax website. Authorities discovered earlier this week that the Canada Revenue Agency site was hacked into over a six-hour period and the Heartbleed vulnerability was exploited to nab roughly 900 social insurance numbers and possibly other information from Canadian taxpayers. Police arrested 19-year-old Stephen Solis Reyes in London, Ontario on Wednesday and seized his computer equipment. He is allegedly associated with the attack, according to Reuters, and faces criminal charges of unauthorized use of computer and mischief in relation to data. While the hack into the CRA appears to be the first reported attack with Heartbleed, it likely will not be the last. News of the massive Heartbleed bug reverberated across the internet last week, showing how easily people's online data could be accessed. This has been FPP Radio News. Online at fppradio.com. This is the Onion Week in Review. This week, mothers across the nation invented a new drug to worry about, confirming that the completely fictitious new substance was appearing in schoolyards across the nation and is easily created from simple household products like sugar, window cleaner, and petroleum jelly. Calling the totally made-up narcotic scramp, mothers in desperate need of something to fret over deluded themselves into constantly agonizing over the widespread drug epidemic that exists solely in their minds. My son sits in his room for hours and hours. It must be scramp. He's a scramp pet. I bet they'll figure out how to scramp with this, too. In other news, a man confidently strides through a beaded curtain without parting it. A father takes a picture of his daughter every day from birth until he abandons his family. And the same homeless man is always begging for change on the same United flight. Stalled contract negotiations have prevented me from reviewing any more news until I receive a co-producer credit. But for more, visit theonion.com slash newsbeat. Free Talk Live launching here into the second hour of the program. You can bring up whatever you'd like. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And you can join us on Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Joining you in studio tonight, it's Ian. It's Brian. And Mark. And we'll, of course, take your calls about anything. Also, still to come here tonight... Uh, this Kevin Edson character, also known as what's his other name? Kayvon. and he's a white dude. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Honestly, I didn't know that until I saw the picture. <laughs> right. So we'll uh, we'll find out what he did with a backpack and a rice cooker at the most recent Boston Marathon a few well, days what, ago. Well, not at the no. The Boston Marathon is this coming week. This oh, was really? this, this was a um it was a ceremony for the uh, survivors of the Boston Marathon. Oh, but it was a week. It was a full year away from. Yes, the it, last it was. One. Yeah, it okay, was the year me off. anniversary. It was the same date. Got yeah. it. So we'll give you more about what happened with him. But first, five cops caught lying on the witness stand. Uh-uh. Also, Mark, uh, the definition of citizen was brought up in the last hour, and I did pull up Black's Law Dictionary. You had said that you had seen a more recent version of Black's Law that it had changed the definition of citizen. Yeah, Turns somebody out- linked it to, um, on Facebook to me, and, and I was like, huh, that's interesting. 
Turns out you were linked to a website called the Law Dictionary. Dot org, yes. Org. Make when sure you, you put the the in front. Or otherwise, it'll get... take you somewhere else. Yeah. Porn. The, uh, no, it's just a different <laughs> site. But uh, this, this website cites that they are cl- they're claiming to list Black's Law 2nd Edition, which is a pretty old version of Black's Law, probably from mm-hmm. the turn of the 20th century. Uh, turn into the 20th century. Right. So that's a pretty old version. The version that I have here is the most recent one. That is the ninth edition of Black's Law. Now, the version that you were reading did not say anything about any obligation to protect a citizen. Right. It says, uh, what is a citizen in general? A member of a free city or jural society possessing all the rights and privileges that can be enjoyed by any person under its constitution and government and subject to the corresponding duties. I don't like the sound that that sound just the sounding of that alone kind of creeps me out. It really divergent esque Hunger Games sounding. Well, the classic definition of citizen is one who owes. If you look it up in dictionary, any mm-hmm. regular dictionary, because again, there's a difference between a legal dictionary and, and a regular, regular dictionary, dictionary, right? Um, and the reason why there's a difference is because law is this esoteric thing that lawyers want to keep to themselves Mm -hmm. and so they have words that look like english words they're spelled the same way as english words but they're legal versions of those english words so therefore their definitions can be completely changed which is why the word person in legal land can mean a corporation yep uh gotta love that double speak they can just make it mean whatever they want to make it mean and so the definition of citizen most recent version of black's law dictionary the ninth edition is as follows a person who by either birth or naturalization is a member of a political community owing allegiance to the community that means you do what they say (laughs) uh and being entitled to enjoy all of its civil rights and protections a member of the civil state entitled to all of its privileges so i like that sounding even less so the idea is that you obey in -hmm. return for being protected that's kind of the the deal so it's the mafia so it's the mob it's exactly. essentially the mob. Except, except at least with the mob, maybe they would honor their word. Like if the mob says they're going to protect your shop, and you know if you give them money, they I'm might make, actually protect your shop from a different mob. I'll make you an offer you can't refuse. In this case, the no. government has ruled over and over again that they have no obligation to protect you. That doesn't mean that the police won't protect you. It just means that if they don't, they're not legally... They're not in trouble for it. Right. There's no obligation. They can't be held liable. You can't sue them over it. While protecting their identity and serving your behind a whooping. <laughs> but yet people believe that the police are obligated to to help them and to do things for them. But they're not um, nope. at all. Nope. In Public fact, Enemy told us about that. Now they're not supposed. One of the things they're not supposed Public to do. Public Enemy, man, what a, a group before their time. I way before their time. I did not get it. Um, but so many lyrics uh, from their songs. I'm mm. like, oh wow. Oh yeah. I get it. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's now. It's more true now even than it was then because now people are finally getting socially conscious and waking up. Sorry, I didn't mean to step. No, I mean by mm. all means. Yeah, uh, I mean because because I mean honestly, it's true. I mean honestly, if Public Enemy came out today. I think, though, they wouldn't be as influential as they were because they were finally open up. uh, They were opening people's eyes to what was going on and they were saying things that really shook people. I mean, they were talking about like F Elvis Presley and F John Wayne and they're bringing up like like just things that you didn't know about that didn't like, you know, the publicists and the and the um, the public relations guys didn't bring up about these guys. But they're like, hey, open your eyes to the truth, you Mm -hmm. know. Awesome. I can't say I'm too familiar with uh, with their work. It was probably I was a little too young. I think you and me are about the same age. Really? Yeah. When were they big? Like the in the late eighties, the late eighties, early nineties. I would have been like nine in nineteen eighty nine. Yeah, I was ten. <laughs> I had to listen to them. They were all over. It was like I had to, as a card carrying member of the Black Party, I had to I listen see. to Public Enemy. I'll, I'll, I'll burn you a CD. I'll make you a CD. Okay, cool. Uh, so here's what happened with the police in. Oh, where in the hell is this? Sh- Cook County. Cook County. That's Chicago in Chi-Town. Tribune. That's Chicago. right. One by one, five police officers took the witness stand at the Skokie Courthouse late last month for what would be typically a routine hearing on whether evidence in a drug case was properly obtained. <laughs> but in a Perry Mason moment rarely seen inside an actual courtroom, oh, the boy. inquiry took a surprising turn when the suspect's lawyer played a video, a police video, that contradicted the sworn testimony of the five officers. Not just one officer One, two, three, lying. four, five. All five of them, three from Chicago, two from Glenview, a furious judge found. Cook County Circuit Judge Catherine Haker 
Habercorn suppressed the search and arrest, leading prosecutors to quickly dismiss the felony charges, and all five officers were later stripped of their police powers and put on desk duty pending internal investigations. And the state's attorney's office is looking into possible criminal violations, according to their spokes bureaucrat. Obviously, this is outrageous conduct, a transcript of the March 31st hearing, hearing quoted the judge, a former prosecutor, as saying, quote, all officers lied on the stand today. All their testimony was a lie. So there's strong evidence it was a conspiracy to lie in this case for everyone to come up with the same lie. Many, 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 many times they all lied. All five are veteran officers. <laughs> now, before we go on... <laughs> How many people in the audience tonight actually believe this was their first time lying on the stand? Veteran officers. Yeah. I, Anyone? <laughs> Anyone? I tend to, to – well, I mean, the evidence is is that, uh, in fact, uh, police officers are taught how to lie on stands. Um, yeah. that, that's part of – well, they're, they're certainly allowed to lie to you in the course of their duties in order to get you to admit to something. And – you know, I mean, I, I don't. I wouldn't be able to say how many officers do this. Now, I, I think I think that oftentimes people, if they hear news coming out of Chicago, they're like, ah, whatever. It's Chicago. It's Chicago. It this happens. can happen anywhere. I remember Absolutely. Pete Ayer, who's one of the founders of CopBlock.org, he was uh, detained in a situation. I forget exact where it, where it was. He went to school to be a police officer. But, yeah, he did. And Me too. he was uh, detained in a situation where he had a audio recording device that were cops confiscated. Or something like that. And anyway, the cops didn't, didn't turn off the device. So the cop brought the device back in her cruiser with her, and it recorded her whole conversation that she had with, the, with her fellow officers where they were getting their story together. They were getting their story straight about how they were going to approach this, uh, this situation with this troublemaking cop blocker. And so it's not uncommon at all for the police mm -hmm. to uh, to come together to have a little powwow session about, all right, guys, what are we going to say about this guy? How are we going to get our conviction here? And that's exactly what happened here. Again, these are veteran officers. They go down the list of names, Officer Jim Horn, James Pater, Vince Morgan, William Prent, and uh, Teresa Urbanowski. Wow. None of them could be reached for comment, by Of the course way. not. <laughs> Legal experts in Cook County differ on how much of a problem perjury by police officers represents. Cook differ? County how, how can you differ? <laughs> It's bad. It's freaking awful. From, well, it's either bad or it's freaking awful or it's horrifying, right? Like, oh, they, they but differ. you know, but sometimes there's mitigating circumstances that say that it could be well, useful. Well, you, you can guess on who's going to come to the police's defense here. Uh, first, the public defender says police officers are just like anybody. Just because they're wearing a badge and carrying a gun doesn't give them more credibility. Now, that's we know that's true. Absolutely. But that's not true when it comes to the courthouse. No. When no. it's a police officer's word versus your word and their there's no video and there's no audio. You are screwed. Yeah. 855. Yeah. You are Vanessa Del Rio. You might as well have uh, just pled out. All right. Yeah. We'll come back with uh, with more here. Well, I don't agree with that, Mark, because I still think it's worth it to waste their time. Just make them get on the stand and you know say what they're going to say, even if it's a speeding ticket or whatever. But we'll give you more on this story on the way and what the Fraternal Order of Police spokesman has to say about his officers. <laughs> 855 uh, 450 fop. free. You take control here on Free Talk Live. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top one percent arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com Amanda Bosold here from Midas Resources. Today, April 4th, 2014, gold opened at $1297.60. A one ounce gold coin can be purchased for $1344.77, $672.38 for a half ounce, or $336.19 for a quarter ounce. Again, that's $1344.77, $672.38, and $336.19. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. 
Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase. And there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. I explain this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237. Anyone can publish on the Internet, but not everyone is publishing material suited for online reading. According to the Yahoo Style Guide, it cautions that Internet content has a few seconds, three or less, to encourage people to read more, to take action, or navigate to another one of your pages. So make it easy for readers to pick and choose. Isn't that the way you poke around online? Use short words, short sentences, short paragraphs, bulleted lists, and short pages. Front load what you write, putting the most important information at the beginning of headlines and paragraphs and sentences. Same goes for your keywords. What someone would likely type into the search box on Yahoo or Google for more tips on communicating better online or in a job interview or everyday life. Hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You're invited here to take control of the airwaves. More corrupt cops caught lying on the stand. Shocking. I mean, cops lie a lot, but when they get caught on the stand, that's a pretty rare thing. So we'll tell you more about that story here. Uh, in moments, Brian Tan joining us, Mark Edge here as well, and I'm Ian. Yeah, we'll continue with your calls next. You can get Bitcoins by going to cashintocoins.com. So you've probably heard about Bitcoins on the news, but it's likely you don't know how to get them. Well, I'm going to tell you how. Cashintocoins.com. The instructions when you go there at cashintocoins.com are clear. It's easy. It's fast. It's safe. It's legal, inexpensive. Customer service is their top priority. You can use a money order, check, wire transfer. The rates, the rates there are great. Cashintocoins.com is likely the lowest rate you're going to get for acquiring Bitcoins. And you can actually donate some of your fee to charity. And orders under $40 still carry no fee. Cashintocoins.com. All right, we're going to go to the phones, come back to the corrupt cops here in a moment. Jeremiah is on the line in Arizona. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey, Jeremiah. Hello. How are you doing? Good. What's on your mind tonight? I, I just say I'm happy to hear that Brian Tan's on the radio. Uh, Thank you. That's pretty neat. I, I like him. Like, he, he's a pretty genuine guy, so I'm glad to see that he's on the show with you. Great. Uh, Thanks I, a lot, buddy. I I just wanted to say um, I, I know you guys are doing a fund rate, kind of a fundraiser thing to match um, for – not match, but uh, donate money for when people sign up for the – State project. Right. And actually, I didn't mention one thing about that fundraiser in the last hour. So what we did say was that $30 will go – Mark's 10. I'm doing 10. I think another gentleman's doing yep. 10. Uh, 30 bucks will go to St. Jude, which is a cancer research hospital for children. Yep. For every person that another signs up – Another 10 will actually go to the Heifer organization. That's what I meant to yeah. add in there. So there's another gentleman who's uh, who's pledged 10 bucks to the Heifer organization. So $40 is going to go to charity for every sign-up for the Free State Project between now and the end of the month. Go ahead with your question or thoughts. 
I think it's insi- exciting. Unfortunately, I've already signed up uh, prior to that. Do you have but, family uh, and friends? Yeah, get them to it. I, actually, that's, that's what I wanted to talk about was that, uh, the family and friends part. Uh, well, not necessarily friends, but the family. Um, my wife is not a free state project participant, um, but she is sold on moving to New Hampshire. Okay. Um, and that's kind of what I wanted to talk about because I thought, I, you know, I've heard some people say, you know, oh, man, I'd love to go. But my spouse, significant other, partner, whatever, uh, they're just not interested. And uh, I just wanted to try to, to, to maybe let people know that New Hampshire itself has many, many good qualities. And that's what sold my wife. She could basically care less about the Free State Project. You know, she, she's like, I, you know, she's just really not interested politically, you know, or, or, or not necessarily having to be political. But so what I did, and it, I, it wasn't deceiving or anything, I, I just said, okay, well, we looked online, and you know there's surveys for everything. You can find, you know, you can find a survey for, you know, what kind of car should I drive? What kind of pet should I have, you know? Mm-hmm. So we Googled, you know, um, what state should we move to? And um, fortunately, there's a bunch of, uh, you know, surveys out there where you can take, and, and it kind of gauges your political, your, your stance on taxes, your stance on school. Um, how, you know what I mean? Like it, 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 some of them encompass many, many different things. So I, what I thought was cool was that I took, me and wife both took the same survey. I, I can't remember what it was called or who it was by, but, uh, New Hampshire obviously was number one for me. Um, and it was in her top five. So I was like, well, this is cool, you know? And, um, so I kind of just kind of pushed her, nudged her in that direction and saying, you know, here's why I want to go to New Hampshire. And then uh, she started doing a lot of research, and, and she was sold. She actually came across I, – I think you increased it, but I think it was like the 101 reasons to move to New Hampshire mm-hmm. or something like that. And uh, she actually found that without me, you know – I believe it's a Free State Project uh, website, or maybe it's a Free Keen or something like that. Um, it, there's a there's 101 little... reasons to move to New Hampshire uh, on the Free State Project website, which is very, very good. It's very persuasive. There's 150 reasons to move to Keene at freekeen.com. Uh, it's a little bit okay. different, though. The, the Free State Project one's really the best one out there. And you know what? Something else I recommend, as far as people who, like you, who have decided you really want to move to New Hampshire, but a loved one is kind of sort holding of you back a little bit, stick in the mud, yeah. not sure. The Free State Project... <laughs> has a great Facebook page, and they're constantly posting, like almost every day it seems like, some kind of map with statistics on it about comparing each state to one another. So, for instance, there's a map that was posted on April 10th to the Free State Project Facebook page, uh, the 2014 local Locavore Index. These are people who eat food grown locally, right? And like cows and things like that from local right. farms and yeah. things. That's how we do it. Uh, New Hampshire looks like is in the top, uh, well, yep, number three or something like that. Yeah, it's number three, and then then Vermont and Maine. So the whole northern New England are very, very local vor uh, yep. oriented. Our, our ground ain't great, and our growing season isn't isn't uh, fabulous. But we've got the market base for somebody who wants to grow food. Yeah, or somebody wants to buy food from a local farmer for some steak. Yep. Uh, the farmers market here in Keene is a very big deal, and they, it's a big they have deal. Things like that in in other places, and then you just keep going down here. I mean, just the day before that, they posted a map: New Hampshire firearms manufacturings and sales jobs. There's quite a few of those. Uh, oh yeah, in New oh, yeah. Hampshire, tax free shopping, 365 days a year. So there's all these memes that they keep coming up with to really highlight some of the. Yeah, there's all there's there's, there's always there, there's is there is there something for everyone like. For your wife, uh, Jeremiah, what was what's one of her like? What's some of the really big things that she's into? Good question. Oh, actually, uh, she's real big into organic foods. And there you go, uh, locavore, yeah. locavore. Yeah, yeah. Well, show that map. One of the problems that one of the problems I have though is I live in Arizona, which trying to grow anything in Arizona is like you know pushing a boulder uphill. But okay. they have three growing seasons, you know, and it, it's possible, but it's difficult. But that's the only drawback that I saw for New Hampshire was I was like, man, because I love the garden. Um, People really have greenhouses here, right? Like, yeah, they do. I've seen exactly. quite a yeah. few. Yeah, you start yeah. you start your um you, you start your seedlings off in the the garage with a with a lamp, um or you've got a a greenhouse or whatever. You put a little bit of uh, you know little little heat in there, uh, maybe even just incandescent bulbs, and you can you can do it. My wife does it. We have a big garden, and as a matter of fact, there are there are days that we eat 
like a meal that is completely from our farm, which is that's mm. a pretty big day for us. We're happy that's when hardcore. that happens. Mostly it's squash and uh, sausage. But <laughs> well, I'm, not, I'm not a squash guy. But I, I think honestly, I, I think honestly, the only thing is just that as long as you can handle it not being 100 degrees every day, dude, you'll be all set. <laughs> oh, uh, it, it, it's killing us out here. Uh, that's that's also a problem. It's, I, I to go from extreme heat to extreme. I, I wouldn't say extreme, but to a pretty cold environment. I it's really don't cold. care because I it, lived in Germany. I lived in Germany for like uh, four years, and I was like, whatever. I don't. I don't mind snow. <laughs> right. It doesn't. Yeah. Me. the The winter time. The winter time will be rough on you, but you know what? When it hits, once winter finally breaks, you know you, you'll you'll be all right. The summers. Pretty cool. So uh, the the pledge for the Free State Project says that once you move, you'll um, use the you'll uh, you'll exert the maximum practical effort. And what they say when they mean that, what they mean when they say is is that you know for some people this is voting or writing a letter to the editor once a year or something like that. I think your wife is completely uh, qualified to sign up for the Free State Project. My wife did, and. You know, the level of her activism is is that she lets me put political signs up in the yard and uh, doesn't mind a bumper, one bumper sticker on a vehicle, yeah. and uh, she votes. Yeah, you don't have to. Yeah, she, yeah, just let her know. You don't have to go hardcore about it. Jeremiah, know? I hope that yeah. helps you a little bit, man. Thanks for the call tonight. I appreciate Take hearing you. Yourself, I love buddy. this map at the Free State Project home, uh, the Facebook page. Smuggled cigarette percentages. <laughs> Apparently, New Hampshire is one of the top states for smuggled cigarettes to leave New Hampshire. So, yeah. cigarettes are being purchased in New Hampshire and then being smuggled into other states. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. We're coming up here in moments. This is Free Talk Live. Spring time is save big time at Herbal Healer Academy. Long term customers know spring is the time to stock up at herbalhealer.com. And for new customers, welcome to the web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Log on for spring specials, including our 500 parts per million colloidal silver, all sizes on sale. Choose from Herbal Healer's great variety of weight loss products like apple cider vinegar, hoodia and metabolic complex, and pro-metabolic, all on sale now. Also, the anti-parasite intestinal freedom and Warwood Plus Complex. Plus, Stevia Liquid Sweetener and the Super Enzymes, all on sale for spring at HerbalHealer.com. As always, we offer certificate correspondence courses in natural medicine. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. Log on now to HerbalHealer.com and click on Spring Specials to save big with our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education since 1988, Herbal Healer Academy. Free Talk Live. We have been brought forward to bring out the truth. I knew this was All right, what is the truth? No, it's in the two books. Oh, you've got to buy the books. Now, how much is somebody going to have to pay for these books? It's right online, depending on what country you're in. They're $26 a piece here in the United States, including freight. Now, why would would God put books out and require people to pay for them. What, what's the point in that? I mean, aren't there people out there that, you know, Those can't afford that? Those of us that? here on Earth have had to put the material together and get it copyrighted and available. Why would God want to copyright something? What's the point of that? I mean, w- wouldn't God want... Anything on this planet has to be copyrighted to be put out legally. By That's not true. Not true at all. Not planet. true, sir. Nope. You can put Would whatever you, you want out there. Explain? No, you let me explain because uh, whatever you want, you can put online and nobody's going to tell you you can't do it free talk live seven nights a week from 7 to 10 eastern live on the liberty radio network at lrn.fm are you looking for camping hunting survival or shooting gear manventureoutpost.com carries the name brands you want at the lowest prices ammunition knives firearm accessories archery air guns scopes binoculars laser sights tactical flashlights fish finders and boating equipment ManVentureOutpost.com is family-owned and has the lowest prices. Go check it for yourself. Get it quick. Get it from ManVentureOutpost.com. Now buy firearms at ManVentureOutpost.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. We know you're out there. We can feel you now. We know that you're afraid. You're afraid of us. 
You're afraid of change. We don't know the future. We aren't here to tell you how this is going to end. We're here to tell you how it's going to begin. We're going back to editing the next edition of Freedom's Phoenix Digital Magazine now, where we are telling the people what you don't want them to know. We're showing them a world without you, a world without rules and controls, without borders or boundaries, a world where anything is possible. Where we go from there is a choice we leave to you. Subscribe at freedomsphoenixeasy.com. That's freedoms with an S, phoenixeasing.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You're invited to take control here. The toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. Or sit back and listen. You're welcome to do whatever suits you. Whatever floats your boat. Exactly. We've got Skype. You can Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. Connect in the way that works best for you here on Free Talk Live. And don't forget, you can join us online at freetalklive.com. Lots of great features are there. Unlike those other talk show hosts, our website is free. Now, Pro XPN is also free to get started with at proxpn.com slash FTL. You can hook up with uh, Pro XPN's awesome service that actually helps keep you private online. Because right now, if you're not using Pro XPN, your internet service provider is probably logging every website you visit, probably logging all the search terms that you enter over time, in some cases holding on to this information for as long as five years. I'm worried now. So if you'd like to stop that from happening, you can do it. It's easy. You just go to proxpn.com slash FTL. You download the software. It's available for Windows, Mac, iOS devices, as well as Android devices. If you're a Linux user, email ProXPN to get instructions as to how to do it uh, on Linux. And you download the app, you get it installed, and you're protected. You're encrypted. Your data coming in and out of your computer becomes encrypted, meaning your ISP no longer knows what you're doing. I'm actually going to have to do that because... Uh... I I get kind of nervous why about not? that. Because yeah. why not? I mean, the, the the less information that people have on you, especially big corporations that could easily hand that over to the government, mm-hmm. the better. So not only do you encrypt your uh, your communications with proxpn.com slash FTL, but also you can, with their premium account, you get unlimited bandwidth, you get servers around the world that you can choose. I connected to their Netherlands server today because when you're doing private torrenting, that gives you the maximum uh, privacy protection, which is something else you can do with their premium account. You can privately torrent, which is a very difficult thing to find as far as services that cost at this level. Like You usually have to pay more for private torrenting. You don't have to with Pro XPN. Uh, plus, I'm actually uh, downloading the app right now. They don't keep online records. Uh, they don't keep records of your online habits at proxpn.com slash FTL. Use our promo code when you're ready to upgrade to premium. That's FTL20, promo code FTL20, and that gets you 20% off for the lifetime of your account at ProXPN. You have nothing to lose but your privacy, and there's a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. So really, check this out, ProXPN.com slash FTL. Go grab the app and get started with it tonight, uh, as Brian Tan is doing as we That's speak. That's right. I'm doing that for my uh, iPhone right now. So toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. We started out earlier talking about a story from the Chicago Tribune where five police officers took a witness stand at the Skokie Courthouse and were all five caught lying on the stand. Now, (laughs) we know there's plenty of evidence out there that cops tell lies, and anybody that's spent enough time in court knows that cops do tell lies on the stand. But it's Mm -hmm. hard to prove that sometimes. Or even if it's just your word against theirs, um, they they always get it. It it, it generally goes in their direction. I mean, what what judge, what jury is going to say? Oh well, he said, she said. I guess I just can't make a decision when it comes to a police officer being one of the he's or she's. Now, the Cook County Public Defender says that police officers are just like anybody. Just because they're wearing a badge and carrying a gun doesn't give them more credibility. Well, I wish more judges thought that way. Absolutely. Uh, he goes on to say some officers approach it as a game of cops and robbers. And this is anything but a game. He says, I've heard uh, some police officers say in a social setting that if the defendant's going to lie to beat the case, why can't I lie too? And that is just the worst. I'm sorry. As someone who used to be in law enforcement, you take the oath, 
and you're supposed to take it seriously. And part of the thing with the oath is that you're supposed to have your integrity. Mm. That's the whole aspect of it. That's really what the us versus them is supposed to be. You're supposed to have the integrity. And if you're actually going to really do that, I'm sorry. Then you're lowering yourself. You, to you're that, yeah, you're that way level. lower. My mother always told me as a kid, two wrongs don't make a right. Mm-hmm. And it definitely don't matter if you wear a badge or you wear the black robe. Matter of fact, when you try to do the wrong to combat the wrong, your wrong is worse than the other wrong, if that makes any sense. Yeah, I got well, you. If you're on the side of uh, good, because what you're doing is you're portraying um, you know, that somehow good is triumphing over evil, but you're using evil to triumph over mm-hmm. good. Or at least, you know, evil to triumph over evil, which is still evil. So, I mean, you can't, as a police, as a law enforcement officer, you're supposed to be representing the side of what is good, honest, true, and just, and upright. Yeah. And corrupted means will lead to a corrupted ends. Exactly. Superman didn't lie to nobody. That's so, all I got to say. So <laughs> that's the word from the public defender. On the other hand, Pat Camden, spokesman for the Fraternal Order Police, the union representing rank and file officers, says the overwhelming majority of officers are truthful. He says, obviously, perjury isn't something that is condoned by the FOP or anybody in the police department. These are allegations, and an investigation is taking place. County prosecutors heard that a hundred times. Yeah, really. Said judges occasionally don't believe an officer's version of events, but it's rare for a cop to be called out for lying on the stand. A University of Chicago law student in the late 80s and early 90s studied police perjury in the Cook County system, interviewing dozens of courtroom veterans as well as narcotics officers. Myron Orfeld, now a University of Minnesota law professor, found that most police officers, judges, and public defenders believed officers at least shaded the facts to support their arrest. That's an interesting term. I've never heard of shading the facts. <laughs> that is new. <laughs> not I'm going to have to use that. Apparently, it's not a lie. So, 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 so that means then the if you cheat on your girl, be like, baby, 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 I promise you, I wasn't lying about where I was. I was just shading the facts. <laughs> yeah, all you're going to get is yeah, a punch. It's punched mouth. in the mouth. Maybe <laughs> shading the facts is where you don't necessarily come forth with all the information that you have about a certain situation. I don't really know what that means. That sounds like lawyer speech to me. It sure does. So, uh, let's see. <laughs> he said that sometimes the officers were just lazy. Sometimes they stretched things to get the bad guy. Criminal defense attorney Stephen Goldman, a regular in Cook County's criminal court, said he believes police frequently bend the truth, particularly in drug cases involving minority suspects. Without the video, his client, Joseph Sperling, age 23, was likely headed for prison because of several prior drug arrests and a 2010 drug conviction. In most, in most people's minds, he says, the ends justify the means. So because they get the bad guy off the street or the drugs out of their hands, everybody's happy. Right. And this is uh, so having worked with law enforcement for years, um, one of the things that my sergeant said was that, oh, yeah, I've. I've definitely lied and fabricated evidence in order to get people, but I was doing it because I knew that they were dirty. Mm. See, that doesn't make it any better. That, it, it, though, that makes him judge, jury, and executioner is exactly. what that does. And this is, that's not the um, American judicial system. Absolutely not. And it's, uh, you know, it's just a, it, it's more that evil trying to com- uh, conquer evil. Right. And I'll tell you something right now. I've written a lot of reports. My three and a half years as a corrections officer – I've written reports, and I'll tell you something right now. I've never lied to any. And, and honestly, if I did, I would tell you if I lied to someone. I could look you right in the eyes, sure as I'm sitting here. I never did because, number one, I hated doing reports. I hated it. So if I was going to write a report, I made sure that I was actually writing. I would beg people, please don't make me have to write you up. Did you ever have any of the your facts in, in one of your reports? You say you didn't lie. Mm-hmm. Did you ever have them questioned? Did anybody no. be like, wow, this has got to be false? No, no okay. I've never had any of that happen. That's any- one of the advantages, no. I would think, to writing true reports is you don't right. have to deal with this crap. Mm-hmm. E- even nobody, even the people that I've written up, they have never, ever said that I lied because I don't, I, I that just wasn't a part of my makeup. Now, does that mean that I haven't lied in my personal life? Yes, yeah, I have. I can't imagine anybody hasn't yeah, told a lie. But, but when it comes down, because as soon as I was told, when you put your name on this, if this gets called into court, you're going to, you know, I'm like, I'm making sure all my P's and Q's is there mm-hmm. because uh-uh. now if I made a mistake, I would write a report and I would cite the original report and say, this is where I got my facts mixed up. And that only it's happened. A, thing to do. Yeah. And that only happened a couple of times because once again, I didn't want to lower myself down to essentially killing my own credibility. And, you know, because honestly, I'd have to look at myself in the mirror. 
it was hard enough being a CEO. Now I'm going to be a line yeah. CEO on top oh, of it all? Man. No. So uh, Stuart Goldberg, this veteran criminal defense lawyer, said a recent client who was accused of grabbing a police officer's vest was acquitted of aggravated battery after photos taken at the scene by bystanders showed the officer wasn't, in point of fact, wearing a vest. And again, that's one of those situations where if there was no photo, then this guy probably would have been found guilty. Mm. Because the cop would have said, he grabbed me by the vest. (laughs) What else do you need to know? We weren't wearing one. We'll come back with more. There's more to the story here about the five officers caught on the stand telling lies. 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number. You can bring up whatever's on your mind. Plus, coming up, drug-using wrestlers. Ryan Tan is upset. Oh, I'm Uh, heated. We'll get into that here. And uh, you can bring up whatever's on your mind toll-free at 855-450-FREE. This is Free Talk Live. There's a treasure hunt going on at mathgate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to mathgate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking at mathgate.info. Inventory isn't about products, kid. It's about money. Products sitting on shelves is money sitting on shelves. I hate overstock. I hate understock. I hate wasting time. I hate wasting money. That's why I love Granger. Granger Keep Stock Solutions help us manage our facility's inventory so we have exactly what we need when we need it. No more, no less. It's inventory management my way. Get it? Got it? Good. Visit Granger.com slash Keepstock for more information. Granger, for the ones who get it done. You've been lied to. Lied to by Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. My name is Brett Kitchen, best-selling author, and I want to give you free access to my new DVD set, The Millionaire Black Box. Because after losing 35% in my IRA in the crash years ago, I said enough. And since then, I've filmed interviews with dozens of millionaires across the country. I was shocked to discover they don't use mutual funds or worry about stock market crashes. They make double digits in good years and bad. Call now to get this DVD where millionaires reveal five specific wealth strategies like private lending contracts, how to use your IRAs or cash in the bank to make potential double digits each year, tax-free retirement income using the biggest benefits left in the tax code, and how to beat inflation with two strategies you'll never hear from Wall Street. Call 1-800-324-3030 to get free access to the Millionaire Black Box videos and learn the secrets the ultra-rich use to grow your money and protect your wealth. Plus, the next 47 callers get a free copy of my best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire. Just cover shipping and handling. Call 800-324-3030. Again, that's 1-800-324-3030. 1-800-324-3030. May I have your attention, please? If you are trying to lose weight, we need your help. We're AF Plus, and we have too much product and too few participants in our nationwide risk-free trial. If you need to lose 30 pounds or more and would like to participate, call now. 1-800-967-9495. AF Plus is an amazing, proven breakthrough in weight loss, a once-daily capsule that can help you lose weight in days. It's also one of the healthiest ways to lose weight because each capsule contains natural ingredients, including green tea extract. You'll boost your metabolic heart rate, allowing you to shed pounds in days with just one capsule a day. Be among the first to call for your risk-free trial. Again, we have too many risk-free trials and too few participants. If you would like to lose 30 pounds or more by taking just one all-natural capsule a day, call now to participate in this nationwide risk-free trial. 1-800-967-9495. That number again is 1-800-967-9495. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. MindThings.com is a fun online game that pits you against people around the world to mine for scarce resources. Do business in a capitalist economy with virtually mined gold, tax-free, It doesn't require a big time commitment. Your little mining robot guy works whether you're logged in or not. It costs nothing to play, but you can buy bonuses. They even accept bitcoins. Go to MineThings.com, use coupon code FTL, and double your mining speed. It's free. MineThings.com. 
Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. Talk Live, bring up anything right here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. If you like Free Talk Live, if you like what we're doing here call on the up, radio. Let us know. You, can, you certainly can call. But there are other mm. things you can do besides participating in the show, like you know, sharing Free Talk Live, your there favorite you episodes with your friends or family via your preferred social bookmarking website. Uh, so you can do that. And there's actually a few other things you can learn how to, to get Free Talk Live into more people's ears by going to promote.freetalklive.com. You know, we actually have uh, printable flyers. So if you maybe have a radio station locally that you want to help people to, uh, tune into or maybe you just want to promote our website, we've got flyers for those purposes. You can download them at promote.freetalklive.com. And also there's other links to our Facebook page and other ideas for you to help get Free Talk Live into more ears around the world. Promote.freetalklive.com. And, of course, a big way to help promote Free Talk Live is to get behind the show with five bucks a month as a Free Talk Live amplifier. We'll take that money in and invest it into Free Talk Live. And right now, your amp dollars are being doubled. So if you amp for five bucks a month tonight, it's like amping for five, for ten dollars a month nice. because we have some generous donors who have uh, who pledged to donate up to nine hundred and fifty dollars a month in matching contributions. We're putting some of that money towards uh, doing Google AdWords, so people who are searching for talk radio online will find Free Talk Live. So go to amp.freetalklive.com. You can learn more about that there. That's amp dot freetalklive.com the chicago tribune has a detailed story about police officers being caught on the stand in lies multiple officers five of them uh, <laughs> all basically busted in court by the opposing attorney after having testified in a narcotics case in the glenview arrest the chicago narcotics officers had sperling a restaurant worker under surveillance and asked for help from local police in making a traffic stop with a marked squad car, according to the testimony at the hearing. The five officers testified that Mr. Sperling was caught with up to a pound of marijuana in a black backpack lying openly on the back seat of his car after he failed to use his turn signal and was pulled over a few blocks from his home. In his testimony, Sperling admitted that he had the marijuana, but contended that he had hidden the backpack under a seat. He also disputed that he hadn't used his turn signal. Pruente, one of seven Chicago narcotics officers working the case that day, testified that after the traffic stop, he smelled marijuana in Sperling's Ford Go- um, gold Ford Taurus while waiting for the Glenview man to produce his driver's license and insurance. He said that he then ordered Sperling, who admitted at the scene to having a little weed with him, out of the car and to stand near the trunk. As other officers looked on, Puente said he searched the car and handcuffed, then arrested Sperling after finding the marijuana. The other four officers who testified backed up Puente's version of the events to one degree or another. As part of his rebuttal case, after the officers completed their testimony, Goldman surprised prosecutors and the officers by producing the video taken from the Glenview Sergeant squad car at the scene that day. Uh oh. Goldman had subpoenaed the video from the Glenview Police Department. While police can search a car if they smell marijuana inside, the officers in this case didn't follow proper procedure and instead arrested Sperling immediately, said Goldman. The video, a copy of which was obtained by the Chicago Tribune, showed that as soon as Puente walked up to the car, he reached through Sperling's open driver's window, unlocked the door, and had him step out of the car. Sperling testified the officer said nothing to him. Sperling, who was holding a cup of Mountain Dew that he placed on the car roof, was frisked, handcuffed, and led back to the squad car before his vehicle was searched. So they they just felt like they were going to go ahead and bust themselves. It was just going to work. Might as well arrest him first. Yeah, really. (laughs) Now, 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 I, I believe you mentioned it. Um, before the last break, wasn't um, was his name Sperling? That's the uh, his um, victim here. Yeah. Now his attorney was public defender. Am I correct? Is that what it said in the story? Uh, I don't recall that detail. You may be right about that. Because if that's the case, then you know what? Bravo to the because you know what? Public defenders get such a bad rap because you know, and a lot of them don't really want to take cases for free and blah blah blah. But you know what? If this guy is a um public defender, then I say kudos to this guy for doing his homework. No, and, he's not. He's uh, um, well. Never mind then. He's criminal defense attorney, so it oh, doesn't say. Well, 
Well, hey, never mind. Hey, kudos for doing your job, but not as many kudos if you were a um, public Doing defender. it for free, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Veteran lawyers warned of the damage done to the criminal justice system when police officers lie while under oath. The dangerous part said one of the – this is the public defender saying okay, this. Okay, okay. The dangerous part of it is an innocent person could go to jail. What we're trying to find is the truth. It's what the whole system is supposed to be about. So they got busted by their own police video in this particular case, and they were all telling Oftentimes, lies. these things come up missing, by the way. That's true. Of course. Just like the black box, you just lose it. You mean the, what are we talking about, the plane crash thing? Or yeah. Just in general? Yeah. The black... They never found that thing, did they? No. Yeah. They're, they're, they're locating it. Um, home, homing it. They're I, locating it. I heard they were locating it like two weeks ago yeah, with the they, signal. They got got you, haven't you seen Lost? <laughs> okay. It, it's not going to be the real black box. Okay. So there you go. That's the the full story from Chicago. Cops found lying on the stand, busted in court Good. for telling lies. And what will happen to them? Well, they've been demoted, according to the article. They are uh, on desk jockey duty at the moment. And maybe, you know, there's some sort of in- investigation that will result in who knows what. But. Why can't all cops be like on Brooklyn Nine-Nine with Terry Crews? I'm not familiar with it. That is, a, that is the funniest show ever. Is it a cop comedy or something? Yeah, it, it's, it's some of the most ridiculous. It, it's obvious, like, you're not supposed to take it very seriously. You have so Adam Sandberg, who's the, um, he's a brilliant detective, but he has, like, no respect for authority whatsoever. And the uh, captain of the precincts is no nonsense I'm going to speak like this, and everything is completely direct. And and Terry Crews is hilarious, and he plays the sergeant. And it's like, they're so hilarious. It's like, why can't all cops be like that? You know, it's just fun. So is it, it's not to the level of, like, uh, police academy? Um, or kind of, is there a similarity? It's, there's similarities to yeah. it, yeah. But it's not just like police academy, because it's a half an hour TV show. Right. It's on Hulu Plus, and that's how I watch it. It's friggin' hilarious. I love it. There was a video of Terry Crews that was done by uh, We Are Change, and uh, Luke Rudowski, Rudowski from We Are Change, he cornered Terry Crews at some sort of uh, Hollywood gala kind of I event. I wouldn't want to. He's too big to he's corner. He's a big guy. And he's Luke way too big, big to corner. Yeah, Luke is not a big guy either. He's like a skinny guy like me. It's a brave and, dude. <laughs> yeah, and he goes up to Terry Crews and he asks him a question about Barack Obama bombing you know, innocent people, mm-hmm. you know, which is not the kind of question that... Well, first he does, a, Cruz... he does a gotcha. Like, how do you like Barack Obama? And Terry Crews oh, yeah, says, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, I think he's awesome. And then he says, yeah, well, what about his... Uh, he bombed uh, people. Bombing you know people or something. Yeah, and, and Terry Crews was like, whoa, why don't you ask me an important question? question or something about football. Like, like yeah i want to ask me a question about football or something and so yeah he didn't like that very yeah. much if i was terry cruz i'd have been like hey i don't get into politics i'm just that's an basically entertainer. what he said i mean honestly because I'm, i mean because the thing is and what really kind of sucks is that speaking as a black man you're not you can't tell other black people you don't like barack obama I told I, I told my mom I didn't like Barack Obama, and I got a half an hour lecture on why Barack Obama is like the guy, and it's like, mommy well, sucks. Did it have everything to do with his color? A good portion of it, but a lot of it was too. Well, you can only do but so much, and if Congress won't let you, and blah blah blah, it's like he could undo a lot. Yeah, um, he can undo a lot. But so, I'm sorry, mom, but napalm shouldn't stick to kids, okay? And that's what homeboy's doing, and that's part of the reason. Not why only he that, sucks. he's also a hypocrite in the you know some of the worst order, in that he's recently come out and said nice things, like said good things about marijuana decriminalization and like admitted to having used it when he was younger yeah. but at the same time he won't lift a finger Absolutely to reschedule not. marijuana from schedule 1 which puts it on the same level as heroin right. to like a schedule which is, 3 which or is, 4 or right, something which like is absolutely that. ridiculous and it's like you know what if you've done it and you're just like you know what your daughters are getting to that age oh, guess yeah. what Barry your daughters are going to smoke weed too good chance of that so here's about your wake drunk. up <laughs> yeah that's right oh, no. Well, it seems to me that um, Brian Tanner said that my daughters are going to smoke marijuana. <laughs> That's not a bad impression. So not bad. I am going to have to assassinate him. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you, you messed up because he wouldn't have to give his reasons. No, 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 he, right. he's not. <laughs> due, due, to, due to circumstances <laughs> that cannot be discussed due to national security, Brian Tan, he's, <laughs> he's going to be for. taken care of. So our toll-free number tonight is 855-453. Uh, plenty of things to talk about. Very disturbing story coming out of... Uh, oh, cave Oh, no. Well, no, we'll get to the cave thing okay. here, too. But Ukraine, there's a really disturbing story about Jews being told to register there. I want to get into scary. that. scary. Crap. Uh, you, think oh, that's, boy. you think that's BS? I've got the rebuttal article. Right, article. Throw that thing away. Don't, don't it's believe It's from the USA crap. Today. <laughs> 
<laughs> it must <laughs> be true. <laughs> Much ado about nothing, is from, now, from what I understand. Kevin, I'll, I'll pull it up. Kevin Edson. A.K.A. Kayvon. Kayvon, 25 years old. The story is from MassLive.com. The man that brought Copley Square to a standstill on Tuesday after leaving a large backpack at the finish line of the Boston Marathon. See, that's what made me think this yeah. actually, the Boston Marathon actually happened. Uh, was held on a $100,000 cash bail and directed to the state hospital for mental health evaluation. He's he, nuts. He is, uh, he's saying he's an artist. And uh. <laughs> <laughs> and there's an interesting detail to this case where he actually had a backpack with a rice cooker in it. Full of confetti. Oh, oh, you gave it away. Sorry, oh, man. sorry, I sorry. Gonna, I was going to hold off on I'm that one. I'm so, I messed. It's not really, it's not really. Oh, crap. We'll get, we'll get into drones. more, though. We'll get into more about what, <laughs> what happened with this, this crazy guy. But should he have been arrested for it? I say no. It's Free Talk Live. You got to pay attention to the small things, kid. Small things matter. Small problems become big problems. Take a transformer. Rain leaks into a transformer. Insulation system breaks down. Insulation system breaks down. Copper windings overheat. Copper windings overheat. Transformer blows. Transformer blows. Facility goes dark. Facility goes dark. Kid, you don't want to know what happens next. That's why I use Granger. Granger helps keep small problems from turning into big problems. Get it? Got it? Good. Call, click Granger.com, or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com the three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Wednesday, April 16th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,302, silver opened at $19.61, and Bitcoin is trading at $511. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication for all your print and audio duplication needs. Online at affordablesound.com or give them a call, 512-459-5253. Support also comes from Voice and Exit, maximizing human flourishing through radical innovation. Tickets on sale now. Get 10% off with promo code FREEDOM, June 21st at Austin Music Hall. Get yours at voiceandexit.com. And support comes from The Corey Moore Show, live Friday nights, 9 o'clock central, at coreymoreshow.com. In the news, according to a report by the Washington Post, the Federal Bureau of Investigation worked together with the Joint Special Operations Command to conduct hundreds of night raids as part of the Iraq and Afghanistan wars. JSOC, a little-known elite military squad, used the FBI to exploit digital media and other materials to locate insurgents and detect plots. Following strong controversy, the New York Police Department has disbanded the special unit used to spy on Muslims. According to CNN, the NYPD's Demographics or Zone Assessment Unit was developed after 9-11 with the assistance of the CIA. The unit was used to monitor Muslim-owned businesses and mosques. Now, once that information went public, controversy erupted and lawsuits were filed. 
The NYPD Tuesday released a statement saying the unit has been mostly inactive since January, with most of the personnel reassigned to other duties. Syrian rebels and anti-government activists have released photographs and videos that they claim proves President Bashar al-Assad used chemical weapons in recent weeks. The Syrian revolution in Kafar Zina claimed that the improvised chlorine bomb used in attacks Friday and Saturday in the village was the work of the Syrian government. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Roberts and Roberts Brokerage Incorporated, specializing in precious metals since 1977. They don't feed the banks by taking credit cards, but you can bet they take Bitcoin. Online, rrbi.co or phone 800-874-9760. Support also comes from Central Texas Gunworks, home of one of the first Bitcoin ATMs in the country where you can buy and sell Bitcoin. Visit the ATM at 321 West Benway Boulevard, number 203. And support comes from Cabo Bob's, Southwest burritos with homemade tortillas. Online at CaboBob's.com. The death of homeless man James Boyd in Albuquerque, New Mexico, was one of 37 officer-involved shootings, with 23 of those resulting in death. That led to a Department of Justice investigation that began in 2012 and ended with a finding last week. Al Jazeera reports that Albuquerque Mayor Richard Berry received a letter from the DOJ last week it states that the Albuquerque Police Department was engaged in a pattern or practice of use of excessive force, including deadly force. The investigation also reveals that while officers are required to use body cameras, they are seldom turned on, and no disciplinary action is taken for the violation. A strong push is underway to see California's ban on the open carrying of unloaded weapons in public overturned. Fox News reports the California legislature approved the ban four years ago. But open carry supporters are looking to the courts to change that. They plan an attempt to use Second Amendment rights rulings from other locations to see the ban overturned. Supporters are hopeful that the legal rulings will form the basis for future court arguments that state prohibition violates the Constitution. Gun opponents say the tactic will not work. The Brazilian company Moscomet is launching the largest field test of genetically modified mosquitoes in Brazil. The mosquitoes are part of an experiment designed to reduce the mosquito population and to slow the spread of mosquito-related illness. Critics are worried about the potential effects on human health and environment. Support for Liberty Beat comes from GrowYourOwnGroceries.org, now offering an eight-week course where you can learn to treat the most common family ailments with simple medicines that you can grow or easily find. Learn more at GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. And support comes from Bitmain Tech creators of the newly released Antminer S2 Bitcoin Miner. One terahash and only 1,000 watts. Order yours online today at bitmaintech.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, April 16th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. Following the news this week that recording artist and industry magnate Bob Dylan would be laying off 2,000 workers from his Muscatine, Iowa songwriting factory in an effort to streamline his music-making operations, The Onion spoke with veteran factory worker Travis Felton, who received a pink slip earlier today. I've been working on the lyric assembly line for 25 years now. Punch in each and every morning, make sure the words are complex and poetic. And yesterday, the foreman calls me into his office to tell me that the company is reducing headcount. They're giving the whole rhyming section the boot. What Mr. Dillon and the other suits don't understand is that here in Muscatine, songwriting is all we have. And we've been doing the best damn Dillon songs in the world for over 50 years. And now they're trying to take that away from us. I don't know what I'm supposed to do next. Well, I guess I could see if they're hiring over at the Tom Petty factory in Hurstville. Lord knows I hoped it'd never come to that. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. We're launching into the third hour of the program. You can take control of the airwaves. There's a man who is in police custody... For having a backpack near the uh, the ending of the Boston Marathon or the ending area. The, the finish zone, line. Finish he was line, right about the finish line, yeah. Uh, which apparently the Boston Marathon hasn't yet happened, but there was a commemoration. Yeah, there was a commemoration to um, to sort of recognize the uh, the survivors and the, uh, the 
the, the people lost during um, the bombing and last year. That's when they picked this guy up. Kayvon Edson is what he calls himself. His uh, birth name is Kevin. And we'll uh, we'll share a little clip from one of his videos <laughs> on YouTube here in a moment. I've been dying we'll tell laughing. you more about the case and what exactly happened. Uh, but first, we're going to go to your call and thoughts here. Actually, your calls, are uh, you can call in at 855-453. That's the toll-free number brought to you by ProXPN. That's 855-450-3733. And you can Skype into the show at username lrn dot fm. FM. So let's go to Brian. I believe uh, Brian is in Nashua. Are you with us there, Brian? Sounds like he might be somewhat with us. Brian in Nashua? Yes, I am here. Hey, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hey, sorry about that. I wanted to uh, touch up on your the um, neo the Nazi thing or the you know uh, making Jews register in Eastern Ukraine. Um, yeah, we barely just, we barely even mentioned it at the very end of the last hour. The story's from USA Today, where apparently there's a leaflet that's been handed out in the eastern Ukrainian city of Donetsk, in which Jews were told to register with the pro-Russian militants who've taken over a government office in an attempt to make Ukraine part of Russia. Uh, Mark said that he's heard that that is BS. Mark said shenanigans. Brian, what are your thoughts on it? Well, yeah, I was actually reading up on that. That's why, so why I decided to call in. Pretty simple. It seems to be just a BS, uh, uh, plain and simple. I'm not sure if you guys can see the LRN.FM Skype, but I posted two sources, one from Time and one from the New Republic, saying it's bogus. And not. it just seems to me like it was more like propaganda because I, I did find out, though, that the U.S. did back um, neo-Nazi elements in the new government in, in Kiev. But not when it comes to Russia, that that's the polar opposite. So what you're saying is that uh, essentially, the, the, who handed this out? Then it would have been the the, the anti-Russian folks would have would have handed this out. I'm not even sure how much of this story even actually happened. And well, how there's much, there's a piece of paper, um, and that piece of paper claims to be governmental, and. You know, there's a picture of the piece of paper. Jews emerging from a synagogue say they were handed leaflets that ordered the city's Jews to provide a list of property they own and pay a registration fee, quote, or else have their citizenship revoked, face deportation, and see their assets confiscated. <laughs> this according to the Nyet News, Israel's largest news website, as well as the Ukraine Donbass News Agency. Oh, yeah, I read this, and I did see the picture, and it doesn't surprise me it came from Israel, the people that like to push the fact that, you know, anti-Semitism is, uh, is you know, but, at, under every table. But the ADL says that uh, they're skeptical of uh, of the veracity of this, and, um, I mean, if you're going to blame Israel, blame the, the no, Anti-Defamation no. League, too, so... Absolutely, and in the Southern Poverty Law Center, and not I'm not one of those uh, bash Israel people. I, I'm I'm just taking the story at uh, face value, but I do take I do take it pretty seriously when you look at the actual neo neo Nazi elements and the protests um, uh, before the revolution took forth. There was clear neo Nazi elements within the protests, and now that they're not neo not that now. The U.S. government was funding these neo-Nazi elements, and they've been given key positions. So it doesn't seem like – it seems like the anti-Semitism wouldn't be coming from the Russian side if it was to come from anywhere at all. Hmm. So pretty straightforward. But the, the neo-Nazi um, element in Kiev was, I believe, in, the, in their – whatever their lawmaking body is over there, like 4 percent. So it wasn't um, – it's not like they had a lot of sway in the parliamentary process. Not at all. It it came up like about um, I think it was in early March. Um, the prime minister, uh, I think it was Arseniy Yasanuk, and he had leaked a phone conversation that was he was scheming, you know, to install certain people in certain positions after the overthrew of the government. Um, it, it turns out that the people that they put in ended up having very very friendly ties to neo Nazi uh, the neo Nazi party. Thanks for calling to clear that up, Brian. Appreciate the info tonight. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Kevin Edson, uh, so you don't, you can't always believe what you see in the news. Nope. Uh, Kevin Edson is being held on $100,000 <laughs> cash bail. He's been charged in Boston Municipal Courts, according to Garrett Quinn at MassLive.com. Boston Municipal Court charged with uh, three misdemeanors for disturbing the peace, disorderly conduct, and disturbing a public assembly. 
as well as two felony counts of using a hoax device and making a false bomb threat. He faces Hmm. up to 20 years in state prison. Edson, known by his performance art name of Kayvon Kayvon. Edson, was arrested Tuesday night after he allegedly ran down (laughs) Boylston Street barefoot yelling, Boston Strong, while dressed in dark clothing and a black hat. Actually, no, no. He was wearing a dress from what I remember remember hearing when it first came out. He was wearing a dress. He's wearing a dress in this video we're about to play. This guy is is a riot, man. I tell you. Edson allegedly left a large black backpack at the finish line before telling police that it contained a rice cooker. Edson is due back in court. Well, he didn't lie. Yeah, that's true. He did not lie. Now, they mentioned, uh, they don't mention it here, but uh, Brian, you said that you heard that the rice cooker was filled with confetti. Yes, I was listening to uh, Dennis and Callahan on Wednesday morning when I was exchanging this my is a son. Boston show. Boston based show? Yeah. W E E I in uh, Boston, 93.5 for um, the Manhattan region, 93.7 for in, um, the Boston area. Most of our listeners aren't in that area. Of but, course uh, not, but still. So, um, yeah, so they were talking about this guy, and they, they came up with a lot of facts about him. Like, they played some of the video that, you know, we're going to be playing mm-hmm. in a second. Um, there was like. He's his, got a bunch of videos. He's got mm-hmm. tons of videos. Um, he apparently has had a lot of psychological issues for a very long time. He's, well, when he's feeling manic. He's, he's actually feeling, feeling woman Yeah. <laughs> You're ruining it. You're ruining it's too good. This guy is too good. This th- There's nothing secret. Victoria's got nothing on this guy because there's no secrets with him. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, um, like, apparently he's he's got felony charges on him on previously, and he was incarcerated for terrorizing a police dog. Apparently he was, like, the dog was in the vehicle, and he's kicking at the door and banging on the window to freak out the dog. He's also had domestic violence charges put on him oh for boy. threatening his family. His his brother, TJ, actually put a statement on Facebook, and I can't remember it word for word, but some of the things that he said was that his brother's had some psychological issues for a very long time, and the family's very saddened by this, and, you know, apologizing for the lack of sensitivity towards to the families and survivors. He definitely of the doesn't have uh, much in the way of sensitivity. But did he do something criminal? Is my question, and I don't I don't know if he did. There's not enough detail in this story to really know. You know what is it that they're saying he did to allege uh, this felony charge right. of making a false bomb threat. Uh, did he actually say at some point that there's a and, bomb in and that that's bag? something and that's something that I don't think anyone touched on. I think that probably what the lot of it is is I guess in his own way of recreating the Boston Marathon tragedy, I believe that's probably what some of it's stemming from as far as causing a scene at a public assembly. I mean, once again, it's not like he went in and screamed fire. Well, we don't know all the details. Yeah, we don't know here. everything, but we just know that he allegedly left this black backpack at right. the finish line. At some point, was confronted by police about it, presumably right. shortly after leaving it. But you, you mean know, when he was running down the street in a dress, yelling "Boston Strong," barefooted? Yeah, yeah. presumably that was before he uh, left then, the lot, yeah. large black backpack. And then he backpack. and then he drops it off. And like I said, a lot of it was it was almost like. A recreation of what happened with the bombing of last year. Except yep. there wasn't yelling because, of Boston Strong uh, right. last year. Court psychologist Jeffrey Miner told the court that Edson has a history of psychiatric problems and has been off his medication for three to four months. Oh. He's a very bright young man, but I have some serious concerns, said Miner, before <laughs> recommending him for further evaluation at a state mental hospital. The judge rejected <laughs> the defense's request for a $5,000 bail. Edson reportedly told police while he was in custody, the bomb hoax was a piece of performance art. He had a streak of yellow paint down one cheek and a streak of blue paint down the other. He says, I knew what I was doing. It was being conceived in my head. It's symbolism. Come on. It, the performance, got the best of me, said Edson, according to the police report. <laughs> so guy's we'll come back with more. I'll give you a little bit from his YouTube channel. <laughs> Would love to get your thoughts. Maybe you know more about the story. You're welcome to chime in here at 855-450-FREE. Oh, Everybody wants to know, what can you buy with bitcoins? Isn't there like a bitcoin general store or something? Well, yes, now there is, and it's at bitcoingeneralstore.com. BitBrew and the Bees Brothers have teamed up to create a place where U.S. customers in the lower 48 can shop for, well, anything, with free shipping. What can you find at bitcoingeneralstore.com? Bitcoin apparel, stickers, gifts, precious metals, physical bitcoins, coffee and honey, of course, and electronics and computer accessories. 
The folks at Bitcoin General Store are true Bitcoin believers who don't even use third-party payment processors. They get their inventory direct with Bitcoin and pass on the savings to you. Shop at BitcoinGeneralStore.com with confidence that you are supporting a real Bitcoin economy. You gotta see what they have to offer. Visit BitcoinGeneralStore.com today. That's BitcoinGeneralStore.com. Gold, it's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800 686 2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800 686 2237. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at FPPRadio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at News.FPP.CC and books at Shop.FPP.CC. Find FPP online at FPP.CC. That's FPP.CC, as in Creative Commons. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Do you love coffee as much as I love coffee? Here's a delicious way to drink the best of the best coffee and make a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox Coffee. And you can try a pound for free. All you do is cover shipping. It's organic, shade-grown, top 1% Arabica grade. 10% of future purchases help our efforts to give the gift of human freedom through at least 100 microloans via World Vision. For more information, go to coffee.freetalklive.com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. We're going to tell you more about Kayvon Edson, the <laughs> man that. accused. That's of being a hoax bomber, not an actual bomber, a hoax bomber here in a few moments. We'll share uh, more with you. Your thoughts are certainly welcome here about whatever's on your mind. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And you can, of course, join us via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. At coffee.freetalklive.com, you can get a free pound of the best of the best coffee. It's it's BuzzBox coffee. It's shade grown, 100% organic, top 1% one, uh, 1 grade Arabica beans. Now, coffee is a very absorbent crop, and that makes the organic certification that much more important in this circumstance. BuzzBox is competitively priced with other high-end coffees, but they do something that other coffee producers don't seem to care anything for. They set up a program that allows people around the world to uh, buy into their co-op. Uh, co they also make it possible for Free Talk Live to recruit a 1,000 listeners so that we can offer 100 microloans via World Vision. 
they, you can help us change lives by offering uh, people in poverty an opportunity to change their own lives. Get started now by getting your free pound of coffee at coffee.freetalklive.com. There's a subscription program over there. You sign up. You can cancel at any time. You cover the shipping. We'll give you the free pound at coffee.freetalklive.com. All right, so uh, we'll continue here. Kayvon Edson is being held on a hundred thousand dollars bail, with several charges: three misdemeanors, two felonies. The felonies involve uh, basically a hoax device, as they're calling it, as a rice cooker that he had in a backpack, apparently filled with confetti. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they're also claiming that he made a bomb threat, a you know false bomb threat, or just any old bomb threat. Now. Mm. We don't know exactly what the circumstances were of him allegedly making this bomb threat. We do know that he did have a, a rice cooker in a backpack that he dressed up in all black. He was wearing like a dress and a very large lady's hat, very black hat. Um, and then, you know, he's, he's walking. There's actually videos of this, of him walking right yep. down the middle of the street. He's very, very conspicuous in the way that he does this. Yeah, he's not trying to be sneaky at all. He, right. he's, he wants the attention. This is definitely something that, you know, he's planned. He's, he's executing, and he's gotten plenty of attention. He's now being held uh, pending psychological evaluation. He's got multiple criminal charges. But I have to ask, did Kayvon actually commit a crime here in this instance? I mean, presuming, look, let's just say he didn't call in a bomb threat. You don't mean a crime tell, from the statutory sense, but uh, breaking like a of, crime, as in it was somebody harmed in this. Well, uh, in I, this I think incident. that in a sense, though, the the survivors of the attack and and the uh, people, you know, the the people that are there who have been injured and the people that have lost people there, I think he hurt them. I mean, that that's a, something that I, you know, I'm laughing about the guy, you know, because I do He's think silly. That, yeah, he's a silly guy, but at the same token, you can be silly, but you can kind of go past the limits of good taste. Yeah, let me ask you this, um, Ian. Now, let's say I have a uh, a revolver that I know there aren't any rounds in. Mm -hmm. Now I go around and I pull that revolver out and I point it at people's face and pull the trigger. That's a pretty clear and present threat to somebody's uh, existence. Right, but, but here but, we're talking about a, a rice cooker. Yeah, well, this rice cooker. But um, you didn't know it was a rice cooker. You, it, you, all you see is a backpack, and you're he's essentially recreating the Boston Marathon bombing. You, they, they don't know. Nobody knows. Yeah, th that's exactly what it is. On the anniversary of the Boston bombing, this guy's performance art is to drop off a black backpack like the black pack uh -huh. that blew people to, and um, you know sent them to heaven and hell um this you know to drop this off and to, that's what his performance art is is it essentially it's tacky i mean it's definitely, is it tacky to pull out a gun and and, and, and like well, that's a definite threat against somebody's life you're aiming a gun at somebody it's a pretty but it doesn't have threat. a bullet in Some it dude putting down well the person in there doesn't know that it doesn't have a bullet in it and it's pretty you know when the somebody people there didn't you, know that this rice cooker wasn't a bomb just like the one that killed their so family everybody and with a rice here. cooker is now a criminal no just the ones that bring it in a black backpack on the anniversary it's ridiculous. of the it is not ridiculous ian it this is this his performance so had he was done it threat. on any other day you'd be fine with it now, honestly, Honestly, I, I'll, this is what I say about that. In the, uh, the the world that we live in today where, you know, we're not all safe and sound, in, you know, from sea to shining sea, anybody that has a black bag of something dressed in all black, I mean, honestly, if I would see it, I would be nervous. I'm not going to walk up and say, oh, what's in here and open it up. I'm not going to do that. Let me ask you this, Ian. So this is um, if I d did this situation with the gun, like I go and I pull this gun on people and I'm just, you know, it's got no bullets in it. I'm just pulling the trigger and watching it, the, the, the empty revolver, you know, fall on an empty chamber. Click, click, click. What? Who's the victim and how do I make it good to them? You know, that's a good question. I don't have a good answer. Right, and that's why I think this sort of, well, if there's no victim, no crime thing, there's, there's some there's some gray areas to it that need to be discussed. The well, fact is, is that, that there's uh, that mental would, trauma. Okay, I would think a court would have to come up with some sort of a, a number, or some sort of mediator or arbitrator would I have to come up with I think likely what the court's going to be dealing with is somebody's got their teeth knocked out, and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, because they did some probably dumb... probably would be justified in that particular case. But a dude setting down a backpack somewhere, I don't think should be a criminal act. I mean, that's not obviously something that is a danger. Why do you think he was setting down the backpack? Well, the idea was Just it was performance happened to art. have a rice cooker there. He's coming from Montgomery Ward. What if it had been Wards? filled with balloons? I mean, so what? Well, who cares what's in the what's in the backpack? Would it but have I, been? I think. I what, think. What, the, what, was it only a criminal charge because he had a rice cooker? If it had been filled with balloons, would that have been no, okay? No, I, I think. I think the whole point of it is the recreation of the event that they were commemorating, and the fact of the matter is, is here is a guy black backpack. Yeah. 
You don't know what's in it. So if it's he a blue just backpack. Drops. Well, no, I think for I think a wow. b- backpack. Period. I mean, you have to be. You can't even go to baseball games so if he'd with have a backpack a, a large anymore. Large lady's purse. He'd have been in the clear then. You know, right? I, I think that I, I think that you, it's interesting, right? Like, where does it end and where does it begin? What if I was just walking down the street with my briefcase, which is a backpack, yeah. and uh, you know, somebody's like, backpack. Yeah, that, that's you know, yeah. right. Like so, then, then you like here's one end of the, uh, the the scenario. The other end is is that he drops a backpack. For one, my problem is is his intention intentionality uh, in this is like he bought a rice cooker, filled it with confetti, yeah. put it in a black backpack in order to do what performance art? Oh, a party. The performance. <laughs> no, the performance art is scaring what else the do you do with confetti. Terrorizing people. That's what his goal but was. But he was in the middle of an empty street. I mean, there was nobody around him. There were people on the sides of the street. He's mm. obviously dressed in some weird manner in this black. <laughs> but you, <laughs> but you know, I think thing. that also, though, too, is that you're trying to put logic on the illogical. I mean, it, it's obvious the guy's been off his meds for three to four months. Yeah. And he, the guy's obviously, he's out there. Now, keep in mind that, all right, he's got a backpack. We know now that. There was no clear and imminent threat. But at the same token, you don't know what's what. But the bottom line is, though, is that the guy is so completely out there that, honestly, the people that are there should be lucky that it wasn't just full of confetti, like it wasn't something else. Like he didn't want – because, I mean, you saw the, the the website right there where he's practically in love with the with the, the suspected bomber. He has the hots for – Yeah, he, 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 he's yeah. in love with them. But so, you know, it's a good thing that he didn't try to completely recreate the whole thing. So I think we should be lucky that it's just confetti. So um, I didn't know that he was, you know, in the middle of the street. If he's like 30 yards from the next closest person, there's nobody around. I him. think that kind of, kind of makes it, it's an interesting part of the case. And, and you know, uh, if you were actually trying to blow somebody up, he didn't, you know, what he was doing would not have been effective. Okay. 855 450 freeze, the toll free number, 855 450 3733. And unless somebody says, hey, there's, I've got a bomb here you know this is a bomb well Look i think out, he everybody. did the, just about that yeah well, that's what they're going to try to argue Look it sounds what I like got. we'll come back with more i got a clip from one of his videos give you a little uh, piece of this character home slices he's funny. a character he is funny kevin edson we'll come back with more here in moments it's free talk live if you owe the irs back taxes listen carefully sweeping changes to irs policies will help more people than ever eliminate their tax debts once and for all and now thanks to dan pillow you can get the tax help you need to end your tax nightmare. Hi, I'm Dan Pilla. I've helped thousands of people reduce or eliminate tax debts they couldn't pay. And after more than 30 years of experience dealing with the IRS, I can tell you there's no such thing as a hopeless tax case. With the IRS's new policies, it's easier than ever to put your tax debt behind you once and for all. Call now at 800-346-6829 to learn how I can help you. You know your IRS debt will not go away by itself, but you don't have to live in fear anymore. Call 800-346-6829. Learn how I can help you eliminate wage and bank levies, release tax liens, and negotiate a settlement with the IRS that will put your tax nightmare behind you forever. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. Or go to my website, TaxHelpOnline.com. That's TaxHelpOnline.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. MeowBit is free software from the Freedom Fiends that allows you to effortlessly view .bit websites. MeowBit works on all browsers. .bit is a new type of web address that's not controlled by any government or corporation. And we'll show you how to register a .bit domain today using a few cents worth of name coin. If anyone ever shuts down your .com website, users will still be able to get to your site using your .bit address in our free software, MeowBit. Go to MeowBit.com. That's M-E-O-W-B-I-T.com. 
Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. A report released Tuesday by physicists at Stanford University revealed that the entire known universe from the whole of human civilization to the totality of matter and energy is actually the fictional setting of a cop show called Hard Case. According to authors of the report, existence as we know it was created solely to provide the framework for the primetime drama that airs weekly in a parallel universe and that every historical event prior to the show's September 2008 pilot, including the Renaissance, World War II, Evolution, the September 11th attacks, and the presidential administration, administrations of Washington through Clinton never actually happened and are merely part of the elaborate backstory crafted by hard case creator and showrunner Dominic Egan. We used to believe that our universe operated under immutable laws of thermodynamics and gravitational relativity, but now we know everything just comes from the minds of hard cases 12 staff writers. Overall, it seems like a very well-written show. Physicists have theorized that the universe as we know it will cease to exist whenever Hard Case airs its final episode. This is the Onion News Network. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Up anything you want here, toll free at 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. And you can join us on Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Uh, freeross.org, you know, I'm not going to get behind the, you know, with any effort, Kevin Edson. I'm not really too concerned about his case. Uh, I'm not going to say he deserves what he's gotten, but can only spend so much time advocating for the freedom of people behind bars, and I would prefer to spend my time advocating for Ross Ulbricht. FreeRoss.org is uh, where you can go to help out Ross. He is being accused of being the man behind the Silk Road, a.k.a. Dread Pirate Roberts. Now, we don't know if he actually is Dread Pirate Roberts. That is up to the FBI to try to prove. But even if he is Dread Pirate Roberts, I think the guy's a hero for creating an underground black market, which brings more safety and it brings more uh, better quality and better prices to the black market. It's essentially a huge harm reduction effort. So I'm a big fan of what uh, Dread Pirate Roberts has done. If Ross is not Dread Pirate Roberts, then he's an innocent man who's been accused wrongly of doing something he hasn't uh, actually done. So we'll learn more about his case as time goes on. He's currently sitting in a prison cell awaiting his next hearing date. His family needs help paying for his, uh, what appears to be a very good attorney. It's a man, Do Joshua Dreidel, who's worked with Guantanamo uh, inmates in the past. Oh, wow. So this guy's a pretty serious attorney, and that's uh, going to mean a pretty serious paycheck for the attorney. So uh, oh, yeah. if you want to help out with the funding of Ross's defense, please go to freeross.org. His parents are not wealthy. Freeross.org. And uh, we're going to get right back into your calls. But real quick, a, a brief sample, because I can't play too much. <laughs> I, I can't. This guy. <laughs> uh, if I play more than a little bit, there's a risk of the F-bomb going out over the air here. Yeah, from we got to be careful. K Hover over the red button, Ian. Kayvon Edson is Hover. his name. He's the man being held on $100,000 bail for leaving a black backpack with a rice cooker inside, apparently filled with confetti at the uh, finish line of the Boston Marathon a couple days ago. So here's uh, an excerpt from his video, Purgatory Vacation, published May 3rd, 2013. The setting, he is in a uh, what appears to be a padded cell. Uh, it's probably two mattresses that are kind of leaned up against one another. But, it, you know, it's, it, the look is yeah. that he's in kinda a padded like cell. Kind of looks like Darth Vader boarding the Rebel Alliance ship. Well, he changes outfits many times. At this particular point in the video, he's actually in pretty much the same The same outfit. dress that he wore running down Bolson. Yes. So uh, this is obviously one of his favorites. And so he's basically got kind of like a, a, a very large woman's hat. I don't know how else to describe it. It's not like a witch's hat, but it's got that kind of width to it. 
Uh, it's more of it's not as pointy at the top. It's rounded at the top. Yeah. He's got um, a big nice chain of Sunday some sort. Sunday hat for them for a morning woman. <laughs> some kind of metallic silverish chain. All of it is underneath a, a very large mosquito net kind of looking uh, shawl. I guess you are co- awesome at description. Him. I'm trying my Dude's best. Dude's got here. a burka. Um, <laughs> yeah, you really can't see his face very well here at all, but you'll be able to hear him. Here's the excerpt from Purgatory Vacation. Reach, brother, cave on. When I become manic, which is really more womanish, <laughs> I tend to think everyone is watching me, even when no one visible is present. Like that light, like if all technology isn't available right now, maybe that light is like a webcam, and Google's watching me every minute. Okay, so uh, you know, there's not there's he's changing outfits now, and uh, he's wearing a, an American flag. Don't get an Xbox Connect, dude, because they're really watching it. He has uh, a marker that he's putting on himself on his face. Um, he looks very sullen. Anyway, this goes on <laughs> for another sad. five minutes. So I'll link over to this on our Facebook page, oh, uh, yeah. the the Twitter, etc. He's pulling out band aids now. I'm not sure what he's going to do with them. He's placing them on his face. Oh, he's Nelly so now. He's very, you know, he's got, <laughs> he, you know, he seems like an artist, right? It's 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 very strange. It's kind of bizarro art, but you know, this People this young strange. man believes that he's an artist, and he believed that he was engaging in art, and would love to get your thoughts on what happened in Boston a couple of days ago. Of course, you can bring up anything you want. Zach is in Texas. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Zach. Hey, what's going on? What's on your mind? It's tonight? actually way, it's even harder to, to stick up for the guy after hearing that, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. but no, I mean, it's one of those deals where, you, I mean, look, I, I understand the threat behind it. I understand what he's recreating, and that's and that's rough, right? I mean, it's, it's hard for the people, the victims, and everybody else. But there's also one of those things, I mean, if I trusted the court system a little bit more, then I could say, you know, yeah, you know, this guy should go to court. They should, you know, it should be a big deal, whatever. I, the biggest deal with it is, is that I don't trust the court system. So Same I here. Feel like Absolutely. When, th- it comes, when it comes down to it, he's he's going to he's gonna go into court, and they're going to convict him and put him in jail or put him in prison or Whatever Actually, I think I think what they're I think what they want to do is they want to try to put him in state hospital. I think that's what they that's what I remember hearing the report saying is that they're trying to get him in a state hospital. I believe he's being held there. Gotcha. Yeah. And uh, even, here's and what even I gotta wonder I mean, about this is if you gave him a even worse. Go. Sorry, Zach, go ahead. No, I was gonna say, I mean, in some cases that's even worse, the state hospital. Yeah, so, it can I mean, be. Very much so. We're in agreement on that. Yeah, I mean, I, I just think it's kind of what, you know, like I said, if I trusted the courts more, it'd be easier. But it's one of those things where, you know, they're going to stick them in there and nobody, ultimately, nobody was hurt. So, yeah. Well, I, well, I, think, like well I think you're, think you're absolutely answer. right. And I think that a lot of what it is, too, is that he was in Boston. He's in a Boston court. It's like you're you're in a no-win situation. You're not going to get the, the fair that you should get. Yeah, I think he made a cavalier oh, yeah, yeah. joke, um, and you know, like this, he's calling what he's calling performance art is a cavalier joke, mm-hmm. and it uh, is going to. It's in the same level of taste as what you'd expect from a morning show on a radio station, though, I or mean, from me. Uh, somebody at a morning show from a radio station is going to get uh, is going to get arrested if they do stuff like this. Right. Um, I mean, think about that morning show that uh, pretended to be uh, I, I can't remember there was something to do. Uh, they uh, they they pretended to be the queen to get information about uh, the the royal baby mm-hmm. or something, and then this uh, lady who had attempted suicide in the past, um, this nurse lady who gave the information up, then commits suicide right afterwards. I didn't hear about that. It was down in it was Australia. Australia. Oh, that's uh, probably why I didn't hear about and it. And I was you know. One of those, it's like, oh my God, what were you, you know, that, I think that that was a bit more sort of whoops. This guy, I don't see as much whoops. I think he's in the wrong. And I agree with, uh, with, with the caller that, you know, this, I don't trust the courts to come up with a good mm-hmm. solution, but that doesn't mean that I don't think dude's wrong. I think he threatened yeah, people I mean, in a cavalier fashion. Yeah. I mean, it was distasteful, obviously. I mean, it was a terrible idea, but it's still one of those things that I don't see it being necessary for the guy to go to prison for it. Or what should happen? Hospital for that yeah, what, what, do you, mean, what do you think should happen? I mean, I think one of those things when you go, I mean, it, it'd be awesome if we lived in a society that I, I think most people listening to the show or anything would actually prefer, but I mean, it, he should be it should be one of those things where society looks down on the guy or, hey, what are you doing? Right. That's crazy or something like that. But ultimately, 
should you be stuck behind bars or locked up somewhere is just a really harsh punishment. And I, I'm with you I on this. I mean, it would have been an appropriate there. thing. And I think, uh, Brian, you touched on this before. If there's a family member of somebody who's one of the victims down there, they would be in, justified in being upset about mm-hmm. this. Absolutely. Like, hey, man, what do you think you're doing? Absolutely. You're crazy. I mean, get in somebody's face and let them know how you feel about it. But to uh, to threaten this guy with seven, 20 years in prison or whatever. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't. It's I, ridiculous. Yeah, I think that the guy is in the wrong but I don't think he should be put in prison. I mean, the guy's obviously sick. He has a long history of mental illness treatment. Yeah, get him some yeah. help. Get him some help. I would want him to, if I if this was if I was a family member and I was in this situation, I would want him to promise to take his meds. And if he didn't promise to take his meds, then he'd be subject to sort of mental incarceration until he could get his crap back together and be and then begin taking his meds again. Absolutely. I mean, if he can oper- function, and I don't mean at a high level, just function, function out enough here. to you can not wear do dress, stuff like that. You can wear a dress as much yeah. as you want, yeah. but stop dropping off, cr- uh, you know, pressure cookers or, or yeah. rice cookers. Yeah, and, if you're gonna, and if you're going to borrow Mark's dress, make sure you take it back. There you go. Thanks, Zach, for your call exactly. tonight, man. I appreciate no hearing problem. from you. And we'll link over to the video. And I'll also link to the videos. There's another a website that has two videos of him walking down the street yelling Boston strong. And there's a lot of wind noise, so it's you know it's not worth playing. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard to hear, but but you can hear it. There's a yeah, few points in the video hear, you can yeah. hear him yelling Boston strong. He's kind of sounding like Boston strong. Yeah, you can tell he's he's jagging. He, he he's joking around. He he's and yeah. nobody's near, and really in any manner near him. They don't appear to be running away from him. He's not. Uh, he doesn't appear to it's be not intimidating. A riot. Yeah. Uh, so more it's t- that standard crazy guy in the city. Right. He, right. He just looks like a nutter. Eight fifty five four fifty free. That's eight five five four five zero three seven three three. This is Free Talk Live. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Camano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top one percent arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com Uncover a simple privacy loophole that can stop the NSA spying thugs in their tracks at privacylockdown.com. The NSA has already shut down hundreds of sites, and the truth be told, they could shut down this operation at any time. See, the privacy loophole I'm about to show you allows you to make all your sensitive information disappear in the next 30 days or less. Go to privacylockdown.com now to take your life off the grid and see the loophole in the NSA and FBI spying machine before they close the loophole forever. Go to privacylockdown.com. My name is Jessica Armand. I'm an activist, a GCN listener, and mother of three. Our drinking water and food are filled with fluoride and other contaminants that harm our teeth and gums. To protect my family, I created My Magic Mud, an all-natural teeth whitening and strengthening remedy. My Magic Mud is a soft powder that polishes your teeth, reduces sensitivity, and removes harmful toxins from deep inside your mouth. You deserve a bright, healthy smile. Visit MyMagicMud.com and get yours today. That's MyMagicMud.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. 
So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the Internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm Free Talk Live. Take control of the airwaves right here toll free at 855-453. That's the Pro XPN toll free line 855-450-3733 and... Skype in the show at username lrn.fm. You don't have to talk about Kayvon Edson, the weirdo <laughs> who uh, claimed he was doing performance art when he brought a backpack with a rice cooker inside it to the finish line at the Boston Marathon a couple of days ago. He's now being held on a hundred thousand dollars cash bail. So uh, I think the kind of the general consensus here is that he probably shouldn't be. Uh, charged criminally necessarily, but he should be given some help, offered some help. I don't. I don't know if I support forcing him to get help. I think but, I'm on the forced help side. Uh, because oh, I, I don't I, think he I did think, anything wrong. Well, I think sometimes when, because honestly, let's just say, all right, he does this, right? And he runs into the wrong family member of one of these people, and this guy just snaps. You know, sometimes, I mean, I'm not, a, I'm not all for forcing people, but sometimes for their own good, if they don't know what's best for themselves... Because what's what sucks about the system is once you turn eighteen, system doesn't care about you. It's just all right, you're off and whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, this guy, he's doing his performance art. Not everyone's gonna see it like that. They're gonna get freaked out and they're someone's gonna hurt this guy. There's a chance of that happening. Mm -hmm. And in which case, uh, you know, that would be also an interesting case as to whether or not Kayvon would even have enough uh, mental faculties to know that uh, that he could Why do something been, about that. Or, right. So or, I mean, really it's one of those things where you know what? I'm all I'm all about maintaining people's freedoms and all that but sometimes if you don't i guess have let's use the term mental faculties to use said freedoms i guess responsibly i guess is a, a way to use it you know what i mean because well it's just it gets into a big and this is kind of a deep issue yeah much deeper issue and a I, bigger debate i don't well i don't know if we have time to get into it because we do have, have calls yeah. people want to talk about other things but this right. is an interesting issue for maybe discussion at another time absolutely of, and it's come up before of, yeah, okay, we on this show generally like the ideas of liberty, and that means you leave people alone to live their life how they want so long as they don't harm anybody else. Did he harm someone else in this case? That's you know kind of a question up for debate depending on your perspective. I say he didn't. Uh, but nonetheless, if somebody determines this person is a danger to themselves even, uh, like for what you're pointing out, then at what point – is it okay to take away somebody's freedom for their own good, it's touchy. supposedly, right? Because, it's very touchy. Because if the person is like a complete, completely unable to even take care of themselves, then that's one thing. You know, if they have to have somebody else take care of them, otherwise they're going to starve to death or something like that. Right. That's one thing. But if the person is, is with it enough to be able to say, whoa. You don't take me away from my freedom. I I may not live the, the way that you do. I may dress funny. I may make weird art movies on YouTube. You may not like what I have to say. You may not like my art, but this is my art. This is my life. Okay, yeah, I've got meds, but it's none of your business whether I'm taking them or not. And, uh, you it's know, very it's, leave it's, me alone. It's a slippery slope, and it, it's, a, it's, a, it's sliding down a razor blade and right into an alcohol river. <laughs> So, yeah, let's, with that, let's go to the phones and your thoughts, because you can bring up anything, because that's a big issue. It's more of something we should start a show out with I uh, rather than wrap it up with. Let's go to Temper in Legal Land on Skype. Go ahead, Temper. Hey, guys. I, uh, I wanted to talk about the Forbes article about how this lady paid um, her Bitcoin taxes. What are Bitcoin and taxes? That has to do with that new IRS I don't 
don't know what you want to call it, ruling or opinion or whatever. Let's call it an opinion. <laughs> um, it's basically their decree. They they legislate by decree or whatever. So the the gist of it is bitcoins are property now. So you have to do asset management disposition, uh, which means you basically have to track when you buy and sell it. Right. Um, it's like gold and silver, essentially. Um, and, you know, every transaction, supposedly, you're supposed to, you know, know how much you made in capital gains and that kind of thing. Well, there's a lot more to it than that. But, yeah. Well, it is. Yeah, it's just like gold and silver in that it's an item. It's not uh, because what they're claiming is it's property, not anything else, right? Well, it's special in the fact that it has that that concept of miners, which the IRS said was something completely different, yeah. and taxed it differently. And then, of course, they added the well, if you send more than six hundred dollars worth of the Bitcoin, you have to do the the I can't remember the number of the form, but it's the form that's just. Yeah, that form. Okay, so uh, what so was so to, uh, noteworthy about this article in Forbes? Well, she had the actual documentation, which I found was kind of astonishing. I don't, I don't know anybody who keeps that level of records. I mean, do you guys have a list of every transaction of bitcoins that you guys bought and sold? Who no, wants to know? The price was. I, <laughs> I mean, look, I, I'm not an obedient serf. I mean, there are plenty of people out there who do what they're told. They're scared of the IRS, and they're going to do everything they're told to do, and they're going to obediently keep track of all that stuff because they want to feel like either they're scared to death or they want to feel like some sort of good citizen who's doing their duty. So, yeah, I mean, there are people like they're, uh, like that out there. I'm not that person, though. I don't keep well, I, track of nothing. Exactly. I don't see what obligation I have to <laughs> exactly. keep track of things. I'm not their slave. Exactly. Let my people go, massa. <laughs> well, I mean, I, on a, a fundamental philosophical level, I, I mean, I can't disagree with you, but on a practical, more functional level, I have to say that most people that are more mainstream that were kind of taking an interest to Bitcoin are – you know, really left kind of in limbo on all this. Oh, I highly doubt most people have heard the about the IRS decision. I mean, you really have to be into Bitcoin. Yeah, to you got to be into it. It's a scare tactic. What it is is that they know that the common everyday person isn't going to keep records like that because they have more important things that they really want to deal with. So this is their way of saying, hey, use our stuff. Don't use the alternative because you're going to have to keep track of everything. It's a scare tactic. Mm -hmm. Screw them. But, but most people don't even know what Bitcoin is, no, let don't. alone desire to have Bitcoin. And so if they don't know what Bitcoin is, they certainly haven't heard about the IRS ruling about Bitcoin. I exactly. Wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it, and I sure as hell wouldn't bring it up to anybody I was trying to tell about Bitcoin. Thank nope. you, Temper, for your call tonight. We continue here also on Skype with Nathan in Texas. Nathan, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Brian, and Mark. Do we have Nathan in Texas going once? Nathan. Hello? Hey. Yeah, there there he is. Oh, uh, sorry. I was listening to the, uh, the website feed. So when you brought up the issue of an obligation to protect, it's something that I've heard about before. But I was surprised by just the sheer number of court rulings that are on this subject. Meaning you've been doing some two, research? It only just five minutes of Googling. I found two uh, state appeals court cases about women uh, and, uh, ex and, you know, uh, vengeful lovers and you know suing the state over not protecting them and i found uh you know three supreme court cases the shaney v winnebago rock v gonzalez and warren v dc mm -hmm. all about uh basically the court saying yeah there's no obligation to protect you the police don't have to do anything um and i found a, a really good quotation that uh, i hope you guys will love uh, i thought it was particularly fitting considering the uh madman you've been talking about okay vaughn um, it's from Bowers v. DeVito, and it's uh, by Posner. He actually says, but there is no, no constitutional right to be protected by the state against being murdered by criminals or madmen. Or the state. Or did we repeat ourselves? <laughs> yeah, I'm with I you. I'm totally with you there, and it is fascinating. And it's not hard to understand these court decisions either. It's not like it's a confusing mess. Right. This uh, isn't minutia. Yeah. The court comes out, and it says, full on, there is no obligation to protect you. That whole thing that you thought that government was for, it's not, not for there. that. Nope. <laughs> so you have to figure out something else that government's for. And exactly. I don't know what that is. Screwing than... <laughs> everything up. <laughs> at, at a great deal of cost. Yeah. Nathan, any other thoughts you want to share? 
Oh, well, well, one other aspect that I thought about was, well, maybe you could argue that like in the DC, the Warren v. DC, where the uh, it was a robber and the women were hiding upstairs and they called the police, you know, yep. maybe you could argue there that the police had other things to attend to. Maybe they were attending to some other call. But no, they actually showed up and through a series of bungles and mistakes, failed to apprehend the criminals. Yeah, and weren't those women being raped and slaughtered, I think, at that time as well? Well, that, that was after the police came and they, they didn't go to the windows correctly. And the women and the called back more than once, if I'm right. Right, and the, the dispatch over the course wasn't of 24 given the proper hours. urgency, yeah. and uh, they came back more than once. And eventually the women went down there and got raped and assaulted and all sorts of horrible things. Thank you, Nathan, for your call tonight. And again, the government made it very clear in that case there's no obligation for them to provide any services to you whatsoever. Mm -hmm. uh, however, they will be upset if you provide a service to people without getting their permission first there's big news out of boston again this one uh we've been we followed a little bit in the past boston radio station touch uh, touch fm 106.1 is off the air after the federal government with the u.s marshals came in this morning and raided their location now what makes touch 106.1 interesting as a case is they've been operating for eight years openly with no license from the fcc Finally, the FCC did swoop in and take their equipment today, but it's an amazing success story as far as they were able to operate for that long of a period That's of time. Insane. They were taking I mean, ads, too. Yeah, well, and they were, you know, they were doing a, a, the real community service, and the guy who runs the station is talking about how, you know, his station has helped find missing kids and all kinds of stuff. Like, he's really connected with this community there, but yet, because he's not a mega corporation with huge, deep pockets, he's going to be shut down. You can't do this because we're the government and you're not kissing our behind. We'll link it to the story on our Facebook Google Google Plus and Twitter and Brian is it BrianTan.com with two ends? BrianTan.com with two ends. Yes. Yeah. A meme is not easy to define. What is it? But you know it when you see it. Amazing. Don't tread on meme.com proves that. I feel so enlightened. Don't tread on meme. M E M E. Helping you give the finger to our monetary system of deception by providing you with silver dime trading cards. Unlike today's dollar, they have value. And they look neat, too. Oh, would you look at those? Aren't those just swell? Don't tread on meme.com. While you're browsing their numerous silver dime card designs, take time to download the easy-to-use silver calculator app. This simple piece of technology lets you know instantly, whether using iPhone or Android, just how much your silver coin is worth. Find out all the details at don'ttreadonmeme.com. Now accepting Bitcoin. Don't tread on meme. Your path to a voluntary society with honest money. Don't tread on meme.com, serving you faster than the Fed prints money. There's a treasure hunt going on at mathgate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to mathgate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking at mathgate.info. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Off the Air Live is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. Radio VR. Good morning and welcome to Radio VR. We're broadcasting live from Washington, D.C. and around the world on voiceofrussia.com slash U.S. I'm Kate Zickel. Today is Tuesday, April 15th, 2014. <laughs> Radio VR News. The anniversary of the Boston Marathon bombings promises to be a day of tributes in a city that saw three people dead and 260 wounded one year ago today. Correspondent Martin DeCaro has the story. An explosion and the chaos that followed. Captured on an amateur video shot at the finish line one year ago. Three people killed, more than 260 wounded. Survivors remember the worst moment of their lives. I woke up on the ground with the firefighter on me, 
putting a tourniquet on my leg. Today, Vice President Biden and Governor Deval Patrick will be among the dignitaries expected to honor the victims and first responders. And a moment of silence will be held at the marathon finish line to mark the time and place where two bombs exploded April 15, 2013. I'm Martin DeCaro. <laughs> family of two of the shooting victims at the Greater Kansas City Jewish Center talk about their loss. FBI Special Agent Michael Kast says the suspect who shot and killed three people at a Jewish Center earlier this week will face hate crime charges even though none of the victims was Jewish. Correspondent Tim McGuire has the story. Mindy Lawson lost her son and her father in the shootings. She tells reporters that the pair had just arrived for the 14-year-old to audition for a singing competition. It was a horrible act of violence in my Dad, our dad, and my son were at the wrong place at the wrong time for a split second. 53-year-old Terry Lamano was killed at the nearby Jewish retirement complex. The mother of two was there to visit her mother, as she did every Sunday. None of the three victims was Jewish. Murder and hate crime charges are expected to be filed against a 73-year-old suspected shooter. I'm Tim McGuire. <laughs> The depth of the Indian Ocean is proving to be too much for a special probe being used in the search for Malaysia Airlines Flight 370. Diane Kepley has the details. Six hours into a 16-hour mission to the bottom of the sea, the submersible known as the Bluefin 21 went as deep as it could go and then returned to the surface. It was hoped the device would be able to create a three-dimensional sonar map of any debris on the bottom of the ocean and possibly detect either the flight recorders from Flight 370 or other wreckage. <laughs> In California, Orange County District Attorney Tony Rakakis says the two registered sex offenders have been charged with raping and killing four women since last year. We have filed four counts of, of uh, special circumstances murder and uh, four counts of rape. And uh, the special circumstances are murder in the commission of rape, multiple murder, and lying in wait. Stephen Dean Gordon and Frank Cano are both suspected of committing the crimes while wearing required GPS monitoring devices. The two men are being held without bail. <laughs> Though tensions have eased, the fight between a Nevada rancher and the federal government isn't over. Correspondent John Schaefer reports. Bunkerville, Nevada rancher Cliven Bundy says his cattle battle with the Bureau of Land Management was about more than his livestock for the hundreds who converged on his ranch in his support. They had invested in an interest in the United States and they had faith in their constitution. You know, they were thinking that my, uh, the founding fathers didn't create a government like this. On Saturday, citing safety concerns, the BLM backed down and released the 400-plus head of cattle they had rounded up over the last week. But they say they will continue to try and resolve the issue of the more than $1 million in grazing fees they say Bundy owes the federal government. John Schaefer, Las Vegas. The audio courtesy of KDWNAM. If you're an early riser, you may have caught a glimpse of last night's rare blood moon. The moon took on a reddish hue because of sunlight refracted by the Earth's atmosphere between 2 and 4.30 a.m. Matt Sampson from the Weather Channel explains the rare occurrence. So why is it called a blood moon? Well, from the moon's perspective during the eclipse, the Earth, instead of being completely dark, will have the sun's glow surrounding it. The sun's glow surrounding the Earth then transfers itself onto the lunar surface, giving it the red appearance. On average, a lunar eclipse occurs twice a year, but not all are total. Though we'll have three more lunar eclipses between now and September of 2015, an eclipse similar to the one tonight won't happen again until 2019, making this a very rare event. I'm Matt Sampson, The Weather Channel. And that's the news for Radio VR in Washington. I'm Kate Zickel. Dangerous winter storm Rocky is expected to pummel the Midwest throughout the day, with meteorologists predicting the blizzard will hit Kevin Hodges of Joliet, Illinois, the hardest, given the way his year's been going. Yeah, we're stocking up on everything. I think school's going to be canceled. We're just glad we're not Kevin right now. Joining us now is Jordan Blake in Chicago. Hello, Jordan. Just how crippling will this storm be for Kevin? Well, we've already seen a lot of damage. A motorist in Kansas trapped in their cars on the freeway. 
That's nothing compared to the emotional damage Hodges can expect. Having to deal with a sick cat, frustrating new hours at work, and a confusing breakup all in the past six months. You know, we're getting reports that he recently loaned $600 to a friend who has no intention of paying him back and slammed his finger in a car door last month. Does the National Weather Service have any advice for Kevin today? Not much he can do. The sky is really vulnerable right now. Authorities are recommending that he just stay indoors and think about his mistakes. That sounds like good advice. You know, he looks like a real sad piece of sh**. Stay warm out there, Jordan. This is the Onion News Network. It's time for Off the Air Live. And here's your host, Cody O'Connor. Yep, I'm here. I'm your host. I'm Cody O'Connor, as the guy said. And I'm here every Thursday and Saturday night at 10 p.m. You know that. It's off the air live. It's the dumb show on LRN, as opposed to all of the ones who give you insight in what's been happening in this week of news. I don't really do that as much anymore. Sometimes I get a little bit Liberty shaman and uh, other times I, I don't care. I tell you I'm tired a bunch of times, and then I just stop trying. So it's a lot of that. It's basically welcome to your weekend being ruined if you're listening to LRN.FM. I'm sorry. I apologize. If you want to try and save me, the lines are open, as always, at 774-314-7067. Or you can Skype it out off the air live. Speaking of the Liberty Shaman stuff, I finally decided to make a Facebook page related to all of the ridiculous esoteric stuff that I've been saying lately. So if you want all of that craziness, there's a place for it at Facebook.com slash Liberty Shaman, where I drew a cute little cartoon of a meditating porcupine. Oh, my God. It's adorable. You're going to love it. And uh, isn't it great that I got into making Facebook pages right at about at about the time where nobody cares anymore? Like literally, there I don't think anybody really sees the purpose in them now. Um, there's a few big ones, and they're kind of just like meme generators or meme sharers. And even those have kind of gone to the wayside because unless you're a business paying money for people to see your Facebook page. Nobody's going to see whatever crap you're sharing anyways. I have this tendency of always getting interested in things right at the moment where nobody cares anymore. (laughs) Hey, you guys in the Facebook pages 2014, right? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to show you some inspiring photos of things that might change your perspective on the world inside of your Facebook timeline. Like it's breaking (laughs) the whole grounds of your fucking idea of reality no it's not no 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 when next year what am i going to discover hashtags i'm just starting to use twitter now it's it's ridiculous i'm so behind the times and yet i feel like that is going to be something uh in the in the coming decade or so i feel like shying away from social media will probably make you a better person And I've said this before in the show. I feel bad for the generation of kids who this is all they know. I mean, (laughs) I I, I still grew up where we had floppy disks and computer games and uh, MS-DOS. So, I mean, computers were still kind of a thing, but not to the point where it was like, you know, all of your free time you were staring at a screen. Like, I remember, like... The difference between me as a kid and the difference in me now is when I was a kid and it snowed out, I was super pumped, obviously because it was a snow day. And then the other thing is, too, is that I would go outside. Who does that anymore? Do do, do people do? I mean, there's people on snowmobiles, obviously, and skiers, but uh, just to go out and be in the snow, you don't really, I I feel you don't see that as much. I would just... And it's not like I had a recreational thing. I wasn't, I wasn't skating. I wasn't snowshoeing. I was just, I was just walking in the snow. I and I would dig holes and make forts, and uh, I guess it was fun. 
And I would, you know, hang out with my sister and we would have a little bond thing that's totally not <laughs> as strong as it was then. And now it's like it snows and I really want to end my life. Especially, I'm sorry, but I am allowed to complain when it snows on April the 15th. All right? And if you're going to give me crap for that, you can go fuck yourself. You know, I, I keep hearing this. Well, it snowed way later up here in New England in earlier years. I've seen it snow in May before. Okay. Okay. Doesn't make it suck any less, though. You know what I mean? It's just like it, the same logic process would be like, I remember last year a bunch of people died in a horrific accident. Whatever. People die all the time and reasons that can't be explained and shouldn't have happened. It doesn't make it good. All right. It's snowing during the spring is never good. Just because it happened before, you can't go, well, see, it was shitty last year, so it's sh- you shouldn't be surprised. You should be happy about it being shitty. Why should... I don't like that. I don't like that mentality of just accept that life is crap. All right? Just, just accept that everything's terrible. You're going to be poor. Everything's going to be smelly. Your food's genetically modified. You're going to get cancer eventually. I mean, that's... Doesn't everybody die of cancer eventually now? Like, these are all the things, and the whole mentality now is, well, that's the way life is. Sorry. (laughs) I know it's bullshit. Stop complaining. You're bringing me down from my state of uh, completely, I don't, what what is the state that people are in? I guess they just don't think. Because you do, like, you have to think for a second. For you to get to that point in your life where you go, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, it is crap. This whole thing is crap. You do have to. Otherwise, you're, you're I guess you're kind of just shut off or something. But uh, I'm, I'm going on tangents here. What I really wanted to talk about was I found this interesting story that I want to kind of delve into. I haven't read it yet. I just found it 30 minutes ago. I've been very busy watching this uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson guy talk about the cosmos But uh, I found this article, it goes, psychologists say social media is causing a distancing phenomena to take place. So this is something that I've been saying personally for a while. I'd be interested to see what psychologists say about this whole thing. So they go, with over 73% of online adults now using a social networking site, social media has dramatically impacted the world in both positive and negative ways. It has left many people to wonder how and if social media can mentally affect people. Lemon College professor psychology of psychology, Christine Bacho, believes that social media has made changes for the better and also not so great for society. Quote, overall, we've benefited great, greatly from social media as a society, But I think there are a lot of fears of what's happening, and we've made interactions with people too impersonal and distancing phenomena is taking place. She explains that what a person does in cyberspace is quite different than what somebody can do face-to-face in an actual conversation. She goes, cyberbullying is a great example of how social media communication differs from face-to-face. (laughs) 